Welcome everyone. Sorry, we're running late day. All right. So, did you get them in? Hey everyone. So Savannah is gonna run questions while I cook. Um, Hmm? You can do it right there. You, you can do it from my phone if you want to. Yeah. All right. So, I'll turn this on. Where's your phone? Uh, my phone is somewhere. Right here. Perfect. Plug it in for me. I'm going to try to do, um, like that, maybe, and then, oh, there. I'm going to get started? Yeah. I'm going to get started. Hi, buddy. Out. Out. Out of the kitchen. Scoot your food in. Out of the kitchen. Now, Velocity, go. Out. Go. Go. He's coming on the 14th, so of next, of this month, so next week. What are you cooking? Tacos. Tacos. What do you get, or what do you use to get rid of ticks on your dogs? I don't. That's when I thought you were going on vacation. She is. She is whenever I whenever I drive up to um, whenever I drive up to Virginia. That's um, or I'm whenever I drive up. So y'all didn't even know about this. I guess I didn't even announce it. So the the breeder that I spoke to previously um, about a female. I bought a female. I told you guys a long time ago. I paid for her um, February of last year. So I got that female. And or I, uh, that female's born and everything, so she's gonna be eight weeks of age um, next week. So I'm gonna go pick her up from North Carolina, and then I'm gonna drop Savannah off in Virginia. Um, and I'm also gonna be picking up my cat then too. It's gonna be really crazy. I'm, I'm cats and dogs. Yes, I'm driving to Houston first to go pick up that dog, the the male dog, the stud. Then going straight from there up to North Carolina to pick up, I think it's South Carolina actually, to pick up the puppy, the female puppy, and then to Ohio to pick up the cat, and then to Virginia to drop off Savannah and then home. Somebody asked, um, oh, yeah. how's Cashmere's pregnancy going? It's going well so far that I can tell. She's looking really good. She's very, um, go. She's very uh, plump. Go, I said, out velocity. You're not getting any food. It's not going to work. So do you have any advice to help my dog lose weight? Feed them less? Yes, feed them less. It's not going to kill them to eat less. I highly suggest that you do something like only like two cups of food a day. Um, that way, um, let me see. That way uh, it's better for them. I guess that'll work. Is that better? Is that okay? I feel like this like is too harsh. Do we have all the light? Is that better? Yes, no. Possibly. Possibly. Maybe. Should I stop my puppy from play biting or is it something she will eventually grow out of? I should say on the on the on the note on the topic of weight loss, let me just clarify that that two cups a day, that's what I would do. Two cups a day. One cup in the morning, one cup at night, until the dog, that's what I was doing with Bishop, until the dog gets to an acceptable weight, and then you can bump up the feeding to what it should be, which is going to maintain the dog. So, yeah. 
Hey, I'm a Dober, Doberman breeder. I just wanted to know, a breeder to breeder, if you do back-to-back -back breeding. Yes, I do back-to-back -back breeding. I post everywhere. Yeah. Um, hold on. Somebody said I'm watching Wonder Woman, a.k.a. Rachel. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, yes, we, we absolutely do back-to-back -back breeding. It's not something that we hide or shy away from. The... Um, the only difference between not breeding a female and breeding a female is the fact that she's nurturing puppies. And the, the body, that's why there's no pregnancy test for a pregnant female. They all produce pro, um, progesterone. I probably pronounced that wrong. I always do. And that the pregnancy hormone for dogs, that's you know what enables them to maintain that pregnancy. So, but if you don't have a preg, if she's not pregnant, then that hormone actually is very destructive to shining of the uterus. It thickens it up and causes cysts, and those cysts get infected, and they cause bacterial infections, which ultimately lead to pyometria. So if you're not going to breed your female, you should remove um, the uterus. You can save the ovaries um, for hormone production, but you need to remove the uterus. If you're going to breed, you should breed back-to-back, um, until you're done breeding the dog and then you retire the dog. That's that's what I do. That's what the canine, um, the, the, the post that I always put up the article, there's a, a, a canine reproductive specialist and she's the one who talks about it. Uh, it's just the way nature is. All animals breed back to back. Without human intervention, they all breed back to back. So the only thing different about dogs versus wolves you know, people will say, oh, well, dogs go into heat um, twice a year instead of once a year. There are lots of scientific studies that show that when there is an abundance of food, animals' reproductive cycles increase. All domestic animals tend to have a higher reproductive um, order, or they even have more offspring than usual, which is also seen in deer that live in areas where they're fed lots of corn. So it's not the evil person who's making that animal reproduce more. Nature has dictated that because there's more food available, that it would be better to reproduce more at this time because nature wants to, to the success of a species, which means more reduction. So that's why we do it. That's what's going on. That's the whole thing on it. Mm -hmm. Can you describe what you mean by creature being a difficult or hard-headed puppy? Right. Hard-headed puppy. Um, what exactly did he do or, or you know, uh, what did you do? He um, just didn't, didn't like to be told what to do. He resented, like if you told him to sit, even if he knew how to sit, he would say, um, he would say, or not say, but he would do this like, like pout, like a whine because he doesn't want to sit. So, you know, stuff like that. Um, growl at you if he was on furniture and you, you wanted to get him off. Um, just a very kind of wanted to do his own thing kind of dog. And he had to learn that he wasn't allowed to do that. So... Is it possible to be a first-time dog owner and Kane Corso owner to have the time to give the dog? I don't understand that question. Um, that's a broad question. Let me see. First, now, could you go into the different lines of Kane Corso and the one? Could you go into the different lines of Kane Corsos and the ones that you believe best represent the breed? Uh, I saw the new male is from a great, a great lineage. I mean, I'm pretty sure it'd be pretty hard to go into the lines. Yeah, uh, so, um, hold on. this. <clears throat> okay, there we go. Okay, so. There are way too many lines of Corso to list them all, but ultimately um, the lines that my puppy, this new male is coming off of are, in my opinion, some of the best. Now, um, and what I mean by the best is I mean they, that they represent the most, um, to, they, to me, they represent most, like the closest to like Vizier, like the original kind of head type that we're looking for. Um, so, and those are Derium lines, Del Derium. Um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of good lines out there. 
you know, it just depends on the kind of dog that you personally like. Um, how long does it take you to warm up to your dogs? I got a dog a few months ago, but I don't think I'm really bonding with them. I'm going to give it more time, but how do you know it won't work out? I've never, I've never had a problem. Um, I know very quickly if I'm going to like a dog. Um, in fact, I've never actually had a puppy that I didn't like. It's usually whenever they start to get older around the six month mark and start to start to show their colors that I may or may not be a little annoyed by them. Um, but if you are, if it's been that long and you're not bonded to the dog, then you may be a cat person or you may not be that breed, you know, but usually puppies are puppies, you know, they don't really show too many breed characteristics at a young age like that. So that's why I say that, um, you know, I, um, yeah, I don't know that that's nothing. I've never had that experience, honestly. Um, is it possible to feel puppy on a female dog when she's five weeks pregnant? Is it possible to what? Feel puppies? So, yes, to feel puppies on your pregnant, like whenever you touch your stomach. I don't think so. I haven't been able to. Maybe, but maybe if you can feel them moving. But we've tried with cashmere. I've never actually successfully felt them. Yeah. Uh, what advice would you give somebody trying to overcome a fear of dogs? Is to um, get around some nice dogs that are uh, that you know are nice, um, dogs that you can rely on um, to be safe. Because unfortunately, being scared of dogs oftentimes will get you bit because dogs, um, like they, they sense the fear. Like it's like if you act like a prey item, then you'll get treated like a prey item. Um, you know, so. It's just part of the, it's just something that happens, unfortunately, so. Uh, is a white kind of torso a real thing? No. There is such a thing as, like a very white, as a, there, yeah, there is such a thing as what's called a straw, which is almost more like, it's not really white, it's more like mostly white, but then if you get towards, like, the face and stuff, it kind of yellows a little bit, but... A, a pure white one? No. I know that there's a guy, I'm just going to go out there and say it, the Shipley Honey Corso. They have this dog named Ghost. I don't think that's a Corso. I don't. I don't think it's a coincidence. You, you'll rarely ever see white on a Corso's face. Rarely. There are some old Corso that did have like a snippet of white. It's very rare to find. It's usually very limited white, even on the rest of the body. And they have a cream corso with a big old white blaze up its face and it doesn't look like a corso to me it looks like a labrador like a like a pitbull lab mix or something in my opinion that's just my opinion instead of my corso but that that's not it, it bothers me that they are breeding that dog because that's an out of that's a dq basically if you're breeding a color that isn't acceptable in the breed then you're just a you're just breeding for color you're just trying to make more money because you have a color that other people don't have which is selfish selfish um, i make way too many taco shells I, I must be like feeding an army said uh would you recommend royal canine dog food i have a box or something i've never used it i don't know someone said don't burn my taco meat women. No, it's it's ready to go. Yeah, yeah my chips and soda Bought this and haven't even drank it yet. Go ahead. Hey Rachel, my brother is asking if you're single. I I am single. I mean, if you want an answer to the question, you know. Is your new stud breeding with velocity? Maybe. Oh, that one. Okay. Uh, my Corso Pools, any quick tips? Uh, Their Corso what? Their Corso Pools. Pools? Like on the leash. Oh, so Pools on the leash? I gotta choke you need to check your collar placement. Um, that's probably what's going on is you're not using the right collar. Everyone's commenting, is he a vet? Yeah, is he a vet? 
Um, yeah, you're gonna have to check your collar placement. That's that's what's gonna fix that. Thank you for dessert, Barry. Uh, they said, what's your view on neutering and spaying? If, for example, I purchased one of your beautiful dogs and spayed and slash neutered him, would it be bad? Yeah, it is bad. I did post. Uh, ooh, you're a bad dog, Liberty. You better get now. Quit. Go on. Get out of the counters. Um, so. If you Google it, there are lots of studies on spaying and neutering being bad. Um, it's really no different than whenever a man needs testosterone therapy. Like it's just, it's just not good. Even women, if you have a hysterectomy, you have to be on hormones. So your body needs hormones. It needs them. Now, a lot of times people just, we'll just do things to animals because we figure, well, oh, well, they're still alive. And, and yeah, they are, but, um, but ultimately, you know, maybe not at their best. And so for a large breed dog, I'm watching her Liberty, you better quit for a large breed dog. They need all the testosterone they can get because they need all the muscle tone they can get. And testosterone has a lot to do with your muscle tone. It also has a lot to do with how quickly you burn through calories. So those are things that are highly affected, which is why usually whenever you neuter a male, they end up looking like a female. You know, they lose the tuck up and they get they begin to get fat, you know, around and kind of get tube like. And um, and that's not good for them. Uh, did you pay to get your dogs trained? Nope. No, I train them myself. Um, do you still have Bishop? Nope. Nope. He was only here for training. Now he's home. Or really? Yeah. Have you tried to put your corsos in protection work? No, they don't. Um, they don't need that. They're already they already born and knowing how to protect. How often do we bathe the dogs? Every time they get dirty. Yep, every time they get dirty. Yeah. Um, uh, a while back, you were feeding nature to name from Costco, right? Are you still using the same, or have you changed the food? Um, we have, for the most part, gone back to raw. <laughs> uh, we really just didn't like the, especially since we found out that it had to do with the water anyway. Um, we just, it, we just didn't really like the effect it was having on the dogs. And, like, they were just going to the bathroom a lot more. And creatures had, like, a lot of dandruff. You better quit. You better stop, Liberty. I'm not playing with you. You better quit. She's trying to get into preacher's dog food I just bought. That's where I was at. That's why I was running late. I had to go drive into Austin, and you never know how Austin traffic is going to be. But um, but we're mostly doing raw. We're still going to feed them some dog food on the side. But I, what I think I'm really going to end up doing is going 100% raw and then going to, like, a vitamin um, like new vet vitamins or something like that um, is probably what I'm going to end up doing because I am not like they are pooping out what they're eating. So if, if you're using what you're eating, you, you're not going to see it in its full form as it comes out. And unfortunately that's what's happening. It's just dog food is just like that. So we're really going to try to just go back to raw and supplement as much as we can. So can your dogs be sold for breeding rights? Question mark. How do you make sure you don't go to or you they don't go to backyard breeders? Our dogs are not um, sold with breeding rights. You have to earn your breeding rights. You have to earn it through um, getting the dogs health tested and through participating in our um, in our group, um, which is something that we haven't made yet. But Reese and I, the the woman who I bought. Liberty from she's like probably my best friend right now to be perfectly honest with you um, We're gonna be running a group to educate people on breeding if I think that a person is going to be a good breeder and is going to be an asset to the community then I will allow them once they fulfilled those obligations to have breeding rights on their dog we were not just indiscriminately allowing people to do that I will say that on my very first litter because I didn't even have the confidence in myself that, that I do now, or even in my my product, um, we did offer breeding rights on our first and um, first pick males, I believe. Did we do it on our females? 
No, because I kept them. Yeah, I kept both females. So we didn't do any on our females. So yeah, so on our first and second pick males, we did offer breeding rights because it used to be that at the time, that's kind of how it was. Like, especially when I was breeding pit bulls, if you bought first or second pick, then you got breeding rights with that. So I just kind of went with that. And then after I kind of had a little bit more confidence in myself, maybe learned a little bit more about the community at that point, then I stopped doing that and have limited to where it doesn't matter what pick you are, you don't just get breeding rights. It's something you have to earn. Uh, for those who can't really afford raw dog or raw food diet, what dog food would you recommend nice. to use? Well, it's a good thing I got an extra pack. I was gonna say, did those burn? Yes, they burn. Oh, they're over there, right? Where? Where's this one up there? I actually got that, right there. Mm. Uh, I would say that a raw food diet would be cheaper. I think I cook them at too high of a temperature. I would say that feeding a dog a uh, raw diet can be cheaper than feeding them dog food. <laughs> Say what? Uh, they said for those who can't really afford raw food diet, what dog food would you recommend? Um, I don't know. I, I mean, I like the Costco one, but um, preheat to 200. So I need to decrease the heat. Cheese, oh, Louise. Um, will your cutting corso litter vary in prices with differences or with different dams and sires? Uh, yes, the prices um, depend on the uh, the litter. So if it's a preacher litter because he's a champion, we charge more. If it's a litter out of a non-champion, then it's obviously going to be less. So you're paying for the the money that we put into it, um, the investment that we put into it, and we like to try to stay standard with with everybody else. So, and that's pretty standard um, pricing. Uh, why don't you have collars on your dogs? Because I don't like don't collars on my dogs. They get caught on things. Um, it makes an indent in their fur, so that like if that you take it off, like it looks like it. Like I just don't like it. I wouldn't want that. I wouldn't want a big old collar on me all the time. I mean, I may be tough, but I want my dogs to be comfortable. If you've ever noticed how whenever you scratch a dog, especially like when they have a collar on, you scratch, like they can't get, it get itchy. You know what I mean? Like imagine having a bandage on. It gets nasty. There's no way I'm not keeping a collar on my dog. This person keeps on asking, do you prefer to sell to older adults versus younger? It doesn't really matter. Yes, I do prefer to sell to people who are older because Typically, when you're older, you're more experienced. You usually make more money. You usually own your own house. You're not dependent upon like like somebody renting to you. There's a lot of things that are different from somebody who's older versus younger. That's not always true, but on average, it does tend to be true. Uh, There's William. You have merchandise? Question mark. I do have merch. It's on the. It should it should be on my stuff. Woman, put that down. Give me that. <laughs> Somebody said, Rachel, what is your no. opinion on a Tony Corso pit mix? I, I don't like them. I, I don't think that it's a good mix. I think that anytime you take a pit bull and you mix it with something that um, is wary of people going out. Shh, shh, oh. yeah, anytime you mix it with something that's wary of people, um, then you run into problems. There's um there was a pretty viral, um a pretty viral Facebook thing that was going around of this Chico guy, um, I think it's Chico Martinez, and he has these old family red nosed pit bulls, and he talks about how you never used to hear about pit bulls mauling anybody until they started breeding them with mastiffs and stuff, and that's because pit bulls in their natural state are actually very terrier like and a lot of terriers are actually uh, pretty sweet with people but you know pit bulls were not known for having um human aggression and um and then you started they started mixing in all these big mastiffs which are have a natural wariness um of people and, are, and will attack a person if they think they need to and then all of a sudden you have a problem you have a dog that is wary of people but not only does it attack when it attacks it attacks the way a pit bull does which is with single-minded um, attention, you know, they, they are very focused. And unfortunately, 
that means that trying to get them off of it is a real task. If you've ever tried to break up a pit bull fight, you'll know that it's extremely hard to do. So they are very focused. Um, they want to get it. They want to get the job done and they don't quit. You know, that's, they call it lock job. The truth is their jaws don't lock. It's literally them not wanting to let go. You better get out of my kitchen now. Go on, go. Um, and so if you mix those two personalities together, it can go very wrong in the wrong hands. It doesn't mean they always will. No, but it does mean that it, it is a much, ah, get down now. Um, but it does mean that it is a more dangerous situation than, than I think the two of them um, not combined. Hey, get off my legs. She's so hungry right now. She just wants to eat our food. She smells it. Okay. All right. I'm gonna try this again. Okay. I think um, the oven's cooled down. How is Blair Berry doing? She's good. And will your cat be introduced to the pack or be kept away from the pack? Um. So my cats are allowed he around my dogs. Um. You know, the the dogs tend to kind of want to bully my cat a little bit, and she'll put up with it until the moment she doesn't. Um, as far as this new cat, my cat, because she is a Savannah cat, she does not like anybody new in her environment. So I highly suspect that she's not going to like this new cat being here. She's going to be really attitude-y, um, she and like she'll make him. a bunch of racket, but then she'll get over it and then she'll be fine with him. Um, how is Oso? Oso is doing great. I, um... I spoke with Alex about him the other day and his owner had said that to him, uh, Oso was like his soulmate. And I found that to be very sweet. So really? that's like what Corsos are like. They, you, you begin to think that they're really special because of how intuitive they are. Do you recommend raw chicken? Um, we do, we feed it, yeah. Um, okay. Will you have a reunion with all of the pack? And the puppies that you have sold in the past. Um, I would like to, yes. I don't. <laughs> I don't know if all of them want to show up after what's been going on lately, but I would sure love to see them. So. Do you brush them weekly, and do they shed a lot? No. Uh, no, I don't brush them ever, and no, they don't shed a lot. They typically shed when the seasons change, so usually around twice a year. Uh, what is your thoughts on the food brand, the dog food brand, Origin? I don't like it. It's too rich. Uh, it always gives dogs diarrhea. And lately I heard that it actually makes small dogs' hair fall out. Um, is Cunning Carso slash Out Border now. Out. Out. Uh, is a Cunning Corso slash Border Collie makes a strange mix? Um, I don't think that anything is a strange mix anymore, considering how many mixed dogs there are out there now. People are just mixing stuff together, hoping to get, hoping to get something, you know? So those designer breed people. I saw, I saw the weirdest looking pack. Don't you dare come in here. Don't you dare. Go, Velocity. Out. Stop looking at my cheese. Go. Psh, psh, out. Um, so I saw a dog. It was like a Cocker Spaniel mixed with a Sharpe. It was very weird looking. Uh, do you correct other dogs at the dog park, and do the owners get, I'm just going to say upset, it's not the word upset, uh, when you get them? Yes, I do, and yes, they do get mad. Yeah. And I tell them, I don't, I'm telling them, this is what I tell them. Uh, either you correct the dog or I will. That's what I tell them. Um, so. How do you pick the right food for your dogs? Um, yeah, that's something that not even I'm... That's something that I'm currently struggling with. You know what I mean? It's not something that I even have down. Um, you know, it's just it's just a very, very tough thing because a lot of stuff has a lot of, like, chickpeas in it and peas in it. And from what I've read, lectins are not good for dogs. And so, I don't know. It's, it's a very, very complex issue with a lot of misinformation out there from all of the involved parties. So, uh, have yeah. you heard from Chinchilla? No, I have not. His name's not Chinchilla anymore. It's oh. Blue. Yeah, it's like I don't think it is. Which is kind of the most like ironic name you can give him, Blue. Don't you do that? Don't you do it? Okay. 
Well, what nice did name. I tell you about that? It's a nice name. Yeah, it is a nice name, Savannah. <laughs> a nice name. <laughs> um, All right, do you want guacamole and pico? Not pico. No, it's already Pico and the Guadalupe. Yeah. Bandog is American Bulldog, Aunt Ma. That's the other question. Um, what do you plan on naming the new stud puppy? His name is um, Baptista. I already named it Batista, actually. Batista, not Baptista. <laughs> it's a bat. It's, it's Batista. Yes. There you go. Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. And um, are female dogs always more aggressive? In my opinion, um, more likely, yes. You know what I mean? Like, I um, get out now. Out. No begging. Get out. Blondie, get out. Go. Eat. Really? Go. She, like, trapped herself in a corner. Um, ah, what I tell you, Blondie? Go. They all have church names. <laughs> no, they don't all have church names, but, you know, I can't say that I don't. Uh, that I don't have. Um, what did I do with my spoon? Did I even use a spoon? I don't know. Who knows? Um, when are we going to see the new puppy? When do you get the puppy? Which one? Um, I don't know. They just said the new puppy. When are we? Yeah, I've got puppy? I've got two coming. Two puppies coming next week. Uh, I guess y'all see y'all will see that the first, right? Yeah, I'll be vlogging it. Um, how do you rein control when things es escalate with a stranger's dog? Mm. I do like what I did with Nico the other day. As I just typically most dogs will um, like I've only in all my years I've only had one dog try to bite me for giving it a correction, and that was a non-physical correction. I didn't touch the dog. Dog. Um, I've only had one dog that had the guts to try to actually challenge me, and Creature was there, and he put that dog down before the dog even knew what was going on. How old will the puppy be? The puppy will be eight weeks old. The stud puppy will be four months old, maybe a little bit over four months now. Like the same age as Liberty. Yeah, same age as Liberty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, what about the name Chapel for your new female pup? Mm -hmm. We'll see. Mm -hmm. Where do you get your knowledge on dogs? Experience? Experience. Observation or whatever. I prefer dogs over people, so it's kind of easy. You can't tell about her shirt and stuff. And all that. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to move this so we can eat. Mm, bring it down. You think that'll work? I think that's good, like that. Savannah. Savannah! Is that working? Yes, no, maybe so? Oh, yeah, that works. Okay. Mm. Would you tell us the colors of the puppies, or do we have to wait for the video? They'll better quit horsing around. Um, the... Um, they're both brindle. Both of them are brindle. <clears throat> What's the downsides of neutering a dog? Um, lots of downsides. Lots of um, cancers, joint problems, arthritis. Um, you know, lots of problems. Heart, um, you have a hard time keeping the weight in check. You know, things like that. Um, are female dogs protective of their owners? Uh, I would say so, yeah. Um, I mean, if, if it's a protection breed, you know what I mean, then yeah. Those tacos look legit. Mm. I need some paper towels. Somebody said that about the ride of Taco Bell. <laughs> Somebody said, are dogs in kennels? It's quiet. No, nope, you can hear the background sound. They're running yeah, around. Yeah, they're running around. Um, we got some. Guess what I'll do? I'll try to. I'll move it for you so you can see what's going on. Because there is some straight shenaniganery going on back there. Will that work? Yeah, there you go. 
You did a great job decorating the house. Thank you very much. Make sure it stays focused, that they don't take the focus. I don't want to breed dogs when I'm older. I mean, it's not that I don't want to. We'll see. I get older. Mm -mm. <clears throat> she doesn't want to. <laughs> um, would you recommend an old English bulldog as a breed? Um, I've had a Roddy, but I love the look of the oldies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I like them. I've had them. They're good. I would just make sure to buy from somebody who health tests their dogs. Like, it's a very high risk breed, so you want to try to try to go the safest route possible. And that doesn't always mean the most money spent. Hmm. Um. Stay away from people who breed for color. Any of that blue to blue stuff. Stay away from anyone who's breeding dilute to dilute. Don't do it. Mm -hmm. Skin issues. Um, you'll have immune immune. Um, I can't talk now. Immune system problems, stuff like that. Can we turn off that oven for me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Get out of this chair. Mm. Thank you, and then for four nine nine. Please explain the importance of first pick and last. No, you down. I love a bloggy pup because no. of her temperament and because you recommend her pups. Uh, <clears throat> so. Let's say that um, I didn't have any first or second pick puppies, right? Then, like, if I have a litter for sale, um, in fact, right now on my website, I have a litter for sale. And we had a um, available second pick spot for a female. Now, if nobody took a deposit on that spot, then when time came to pick the puppies, the third pick female spot would actually get to choose second. Now, let's just say that the puppies are seven weeks old. There's one week until everyone picks and somebody's like, you know what? I want that second pick female spot. Then they get to, they get to go in front of that third person. So you're kind of paying to have the pleasure of choosing um, before everybody else is, you know, and that that's more costly. You're and usually you're getting the better dog when you do that. Whether that be bigger puppy, mm -hmm. uh, better structure. Yeah, it doesn't always mean that because what you're basically stating is that you're counting on the person making that choice to be able to choose a good dog. So it's not always a guarantee that you're that they're going to get the better dog from you, but there's always that chance, and that's why a lot of people like me. Hey. I, hey I always want first or second pick. Always. Mm hmm Always. She got lucky with Preacher. You didn't even have to. I did. I had first pick on Preacher, but, oh, you did? I thought you but did. I didn't have to pay for it. Yeah. Because nobody just like was. Yeah, his breeder was not like um, the most well known. So when she had her litter of puppies, nobody had placed any deposits on it yet. So I placed a deposit for mail. And nobody did the first pick spot. Nobody paid more to, to, to go above me, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Savannah, can you? Everybody's asking me to, they're like, Savannah, can you ask your mom? Oh, thank you. Uh, I think it's Ronnie or Randy uh, Jenkins uh, for $5 a win. When you announce the stud for Velocity Bondi at midnight? Mm. As soon as I have one. Um, I know that for Blondie, we're actually going to breed her to the same male that is Liberty's father. He's owned, um, he's owned by Valencia County Corso. Um, Reese Justice has him. She's the one um, that owns the stud. And that's the male we're going to be throwing to Blondie because... Blondie 
um, you know, could use his head type basically. Um, other than that, I don't know yet on, on Velocity and uh, Midnight. Most likely I'll use the new stud I'm bringing in, but he has to pass his health certs and I'm pretty sure he will, but I can't tell you for sure that he is. So I can't tell you for sure that we're going to use him because I don't know. Do you work with Outlaw Honey Do I what? Do you work with Outlaw Honey Person? I don't know. I don't even know who that is. Yeah. Mm. I don't plan on breeding my dogs, but do you, re do you recommend fixing my female question mark? I've heard of the health issues from both sides of the spectrum. Mm. I would be more concerned about neutering a male than I would a female. Um, if you can find somebody that will do um, an ovary saving spay and leave the ovaries and only take the uterus, then um, then I would go with that. If you can't find somebody that can do that, then just do a normal spay. And just keep their weight in check. Do not let them get overweight. Because then you're only adding further complications to a dog that will probably or is already going to be susceptible to complications. Mm. Mm. Someone said, by the way, you are beautiful. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> oh, you're eating. Um, how do I stop my unfixed mail from something? My dog. When I visit my dad and my male pup, will not stop trying. Female dog, even with well, that's most put him on a leash. Yeah. You know, you're gonna have to stop him. He's probably outlasting you. You know, so it's probably mm -hmm. domination too. It's mm -hmm. hard to dominate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you have to do what you have to do to stop the behavior. So if you have to go over there and keep him on a leash until he learns to calm down and just lay next to you and go to sleep, and then you can try doing off leash and just making him lay next to you and then if he humps then you bring him back over you put him back on a leash you make him lay next to you again over time he'll learn it's not worth it but it definitely is um it can be a long process for dogs that are like that how long does it take for you to walk with your dogs off leash i do that first yeah i do that usually before even leash training Y'all better be quiet. Where is the live chat? Here. Um, Preacher, go down. Can you teach out. a two year old Honey Corso his new name out. and also make him listen to you out. outside? Go. I swear he's ignoring us outside. Out. Midnight quit. Leave your dad alone. Go lay down. Um, how can you teach two-year-old Kanye Corso his new name and also make him listen to us outside? I swear he's ignoring us outside. He's a safe Kanye Corso. We found him beaten in uh, malnourished. Mm. Yeah. So um, the fact that you mentioned that you found him beaten and malnourished probably tells me that you're letting him get away with a lot because you feel sorry for him. The worst thing you can do with a dog is keep their history in mind when you're working with them. Just treat them like any other dog. It's kind of like somebody with a disability. It's like they don't want you to treat them any differently. They just want you to just treat them like everybody else. And the dog, it will be better suited if you just expect them to behave themselves. You get onto them when you need to get onto them. You discipline them when you need to discipline them. I mean, if, if it's a new dog to you and it's a new concept, you can always use a treat to um, to incentivize good recall, which is where you bring, which you call the dog to you, um, or even their name, things like that. But ultimately, it just takes time, just like a regular child. You keep calling them by that name enough, and it works, you know. But you're going to have to get on to him. Don't take into consideration what he went through. Just give him the discipline he needs. Um, 
What do we use for fleas and like ticks? I don't. I don't put my dogs on stuff like that. I don't. Hey. On pesticides, I don't believe in it. Go. Quit begging now. Somebody said, um, I'll be in Austin in May, the 18th, May, May the 18th. <laughs> Can I go see your dog's specific or especially preacher? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, we let we let people come by and visit. Uh, two days. Yep. After my birthday. Yep, two days after Savannah's birthday. I'll be the foot. Mm-hmm. She'll be all of 14 years old. Woo. I will have rotated around the sun. <laughs> Another 14. Um, how do you prevent fleas? We usually just don't have fleas. Um, we use nematodes outside. Um, inside, we give them baths um, with Dawn dish soap. That kills fleas. Um, if they're really bad... Like if it's really bad one year, we will we will actually put them on something like, you know, some type of topical or something. But I really don't like keeping my dogs on pesticides. Like we get bit by mosquitoes all the time, but you don't see people taking a pesticide, like an oral pesticide, every day to keep mosquitoes from biting you. And mosquitoes can give you West Nile. I mean, I just I don't do it. I'm not gonna do. I'm not gonna. I don't think that giving my dog pesticides orally or topically once a month or even, you know, like that is in any way healthy. And I want my dogs to live as long as possible. We don't leave our dogs outside. You know, the risk of heartworm is very slim, even as such, even if you get heartworm, which I haven't ever got, you know, knock on wood, but, but honest to God, that's probably not even wood. <laughs> no, in this house, but anyway, uh, having said that, you know, it's, I just, uh, from what I understand with heartworm, if you do what's called the slow kill method, which is you basically just start giving them heartworm pills and you put them into a kennel that way they don't run and cause they can dislodge and hurt themselves like the, the, the worms can, but I just, I haven't seen it. I, I literally, I think if you take good care of your dogs, you're not leaving them out in the back. You're not leaving them outside all the time. I think, and you're feeding them well and they're healthy. I personally just haven't seen that to be an issue. I'm not exactly sure that that isn't just a thing that they do to try to get money out of people. Hey, midnight, quit running around my house. If Cashmere and Preacher go after an intruder in the house, will the other dogs join Yeah. Yeah. I mean, anybody, anybody that made the mistake of trying to intrude here or do anything like that would be absolutely torn apart by my dogs. You know. You it would it would not be pretty. Mm -mm. Somebody's asking like, what's your opinion on dog breeds? We usually don't answer yeah. those anymore about the what's your opinion. Yeah, we don't do breed. the we don't do the dog breed questions just because or even like a mix of two dogs. Yeah. Somebody asked the kind of course that I compress it. Compressor, like, no. no, we just don't do it. It's just because it takes up too much time and we want to stick with more educational as far as training kind of stuff or breed Somebody kind of asked. stuff. Uh, can you explain how to import a dog? Sure. So I'm going through that right now. Um, it is expensive to do. Shipping alone is like like over a thousand dollars. I think I'm paying like maybe seventeen hundred dollars just to ship the dog. Um, so um, you're gonna have to. You want to make sure that if you ever import a dog that you buy from somebody that you really, really trust. Because once that money's over there, you're not getting it back. So um, with this dog, I got him a little bit earlier than I think that um, most people would have. I got him um, within like a week. I think most of the time it's like two weeks, I think. And the dog has to be um, shipped over here via cargo. And then you pick it up from the airport. I did get an email. I had to confirm that email um, with the um, airline company that I was indeed getting the dog. So, um, so that's all I've done so far. Um, he's supposed to be coming in at like eight o'clock at night. So I'm probably going to stay in Houston overnight and then leave that next morning to head towards South Carolina. Yeah, they're like, you can import people. Everybody's like, you need to stop. It's fine, y'all. Don't worry. 
Y'all better quit. Go, crazy lady. Go play if somewhere else. Someone wants Go. to start reading. Uh, what's a good place to start, in your opinion? Um, reading books. Um, like researching everything you can on dog anatomy in general, even like wolf anatomy and other animals, and then, and then you can um, begin to um, research the kind of breed you want to breed. Like I knew that I wanted to breed, but I wasn't exactly sure what what actual breed I wanted to breed. So um, I went through a couple um, different breeds, like trying to decide, and. Um, and I landed on the Cunny Corso. So it's important that whatever whatever breed you decide to breed is one that you really, really love and enjoy. If you try to get into a breed just because they make a lot of money, you're not going to last because breeding is hard. It's not easy. It's time consuming. The, the personality of a dog, the temperament has a lot to do with how hard it's going to be for you. If you get along and you are able to train that dog and you like each other, the odds of you being successful are much greater than if you're struggling with a breed that you're really not into. We have creatures that call on. They're like, can't explain why creature has a chain on. Uh, because those are the kinds of collars that I use. And um, he has it on because we went out. Uh, I took him out today. So Maybe he donated $10. just wanted to Thank say you. I enjoyed the content. Give Velocity a pet for me. Velocity. Will do. She's right here. Velocity. Right here. No, woman, sit down. Let me stop for you. Oh, oh, nice. Brought to you by Velocity. She got so excited. Blondie, Blondie, Blondie. That's bad. Blondie, that's bad. That's bad. You crazy dogs. You better go. Blondie. Woman, I'm gonna watch you. I'm gonna get you. Blondie. You. What you looking at? Did you, baby? Hey, baby. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. Ah, it's so hard. It's so hard. Ah, get down. No, no. It's my ball. I gave her kisses. No, dude, really? No! Go. Ah, psh. Woman? What? Did you say I'm 12 years old and wanted to breed dogs? Uh, I'm 12 years old and I wanted to breed dogs for a while now, and I've been looking for a good education channel like yours. And I was elated when I found your six months ago. You're 12 years old or you're 20? Savannah, let me just say something. I think there's nothing wrong with being 12 years old and wanting to breed. There are 12 years old, 12 year olds that want to be astronauts. 12 year olds want to be race car drivers. If you're 12 years old, excuse me, sir, and you want to be a breeder, there's nothing wrong with that. I would. That means that you probably have a passion for it, and if you have a passion for it, then you know that's a good thing. That's a good start. It's, it's I would rather see that than somebody that's like, yeah. So I wanted to make some more money, and I decided to breed dogs. Come on now. You probably want to breed dogs. Crazy, crazy dogs. lady. You can see him running in the background. Tell me. Liberty, wait, wait, wait. Liberty is crescent. You can see her jumping in the She's crescent. <laughs> Liberty is crescent. <laughs> Crazy woman. Crazy woman, no! Uh, what kind of kitten are you picking up? And what gender? And does uh, she or he have a name? I am picking up Savannah. Could I have some coffee? <laughs> coffee! Uh, thank you, uh, Zeus and Hester. Trying to. Well, the for five dollars. How does Velocity get? How many heats has she had? She's only had one heat so far, and she's really, you guys, no demon dogs. Come on, quit running into stuff. No. That's right. Happy birthday, Bonnie. Yes, happy birthday. You. Um. So um. Velocity has had one heat, and she is about like what? One year? She's one year old. She's, she's just twenty-one. Years old. Um, one year old, I guess. It's not years. Somebody said I would put money on that Savannah coffee. I would make her coffee. How is the cat doing? I could probably take out Blair. She won't mind. 
She's a, you're, you're I'll get her. She's not open. I'll get her because you know how she is. She's like, she doesn't. She doesn't really like anybody but me. Yeah, that's true. She sleeps with me, but that's about it. Damn. <laughs> Somebody said, Savannah, I'm 12 years old, but I'm meant to say more like a 21 year old. Did you hear that? So Blair doesn't like people. She doesn't like really. She doesn't like anything but me. Anything but me. She's like, don't kiss me. Don't kiss me. You can see the difference between her and a Bengal is that she has spots. She's not as big as a normal one. Spots. Y'all better quit. Go lay down. Now. Thank you, Alicia. Uh, have you heard of a hooded valve move and what oh, quit. and what did you do well, then, yeah. for it if you have? Go. Um, Ow. Alicia donated five dollars and she Thank said, you. "Have or maybe it's a hand." Yeah. Um, have you ever heard of a hooded uh, vulva and yes. what did you do for yes. it? Yes, a lot of dogs have it. Um, usually, um, usually it love. just you have to keep it clean. Because it can create bacterial infections. So mad. Usually I can get her to calm down. Yeah. No, but I, I, I'll do it. She's not going to calm down for you. She's very angry. She's surrounded by dogs. Wait, guys. Somebody said the cat is not. <laughs> She's freaking out. Who freaking out? Wait. She's not as big. She's not near as big as most people would call like a savannah cat. I said go lay down. See Blondie freaking out. Now, preacher, preacher, get go lay down. She's not gonna calm down. <laughs> I told you guys. Oh, she's angry. Sometimes we like to just like. <laughs> Mommy, stop it! You guys, get up! Get, get! Rich, get! Mm, are you ever gonna breed your cat? No. No. But she is really annoying. She's um, Go lay down. Go lay down. What generation of Savannah Cat is Blair? She's a SBT. She's so mad. <laughs> She's gonna go over there and lick my plate. You can't. No, leave her alone. Who's not a better? Blondie's like, no, nah, you're not going anywhere. They're trained, so, not trained, but they know that yeah, they need to get not, her in the room. Yeah, she's not technically supposed to be out of the room, so the dogs um, are gonna quit. Are gonna want to uh, put her back in there. So I'm gonna get her so that they don't, so that they don't feel that they need to put her back in. Right. <laughs> so. Savannah cats really don't like being held very much, so um, so that's part of why she's acting that way. Yeah. Give it Really? That's 
why they jump on people, Savannah. I don't know why in my house people think it's funny to train dogs to do things that I tell them not to do. She's my dog. She only knows to jump Answer on Answer questions. Sweetie, we're all making her coffee. Oh, now you're making coffee? All you right. Always make your coffee. Do I feed Blair a raw diet? No, I do not. But I do supplement with raw. I give her chicken heart, stuff like that. Every now and then. Like cashmere is almost 30 days along now. Um, opinions on dog agility competitions. I don't have a problem with it. I don't do it myself. Um, and I, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't care if somebody wanted to use my dog for that. So long as they did it in a safe way, like it's kind of like, um, thoroughbred racehorses. Like it's not a problem to race them so long as you don't race them too young. So it's the same thing. Um, yes, preacher was the first dog in my pack. Although I had other dogs before I got preacher, but they are, uh, they passed away now. Yeah, either that or we, you know, didn't we? Uh, they were good for us. Why not let the cat stay with the dogs? Also, my cat stays. My cat does stay with the dogs. She just doesn't like them. Yeah. Um, you couldn't get her to like actually like them. Yeah. It's like being in a classroom with people you don't like. You know, you got to be in there with them, but yeah. like you don't like them. Blondie is ten months old. We're gonna breed her when she's uh, on her second heat. So it's usually around sixteen months. Uh, when do I turn my candles on at night? Thank you. To, oh, by the way, we need to do that unboxing. Okay. We have the other one. Hold on. Um, Hold on. Yeah, I went and picked them up, but we've been we've been so busy that we actually haven't even opened them yet. And I don't know if you noticed, Terry, but I had them on behind me whenever I was doing my my video about my dog that passed away and being terrible. So yeah. I said, oh no, the trolls are starting. It's okay. Don't look, you guys. If it's one thing I've learned, don't move, Savannah. Don't feed the trolls. Don't worry about it. Like, like um, the guy that was trolling us last time, like, I looked on his page. Um, there, you know, the internet's open to everybody, and unfortunately, there's going to be like a lot of, you know, just different kinds of people out there. So just ignore it. Um, I do have some moderators, so if you guys see it, please delete it, ban the yeah, people. Yeah, they're all over here, like I'm but, watching. Yeah, but other than that, don't worry about it, you know, it they're says, harmless. Rachel and Savannah, so glad you like the LED candles. Here are some more to brighten your days. Lowell yeah. from Terry Davis. Yeah, we love a these. A YouTube subscriber. Yeah, we love these. I even have some, watch out, your head's in the way sweeter. Um, I even have some that are behind my TV, so I use them as like ambient lighting. And when we watch scary movies, I'll use like the red ones. <laughs> so, yeah. Which we usually don't do because she gets too scared. I do watch them. No. She literally fell asleep watching it because, like, she like closed her eyes. She's like, I want to see this because I was watching it. And then she fell asleep. She like woke up every now and then. She's like, What's going on? And then she would just like, go back to sleep. I can't take it. I try. I, it's I kind of it's like. It's kind of like spicy food. Like I can eat spicy food, but like it's kind of like you think you want to, and you're like, oh, I want to be adventurous. You know, I want to watch a scary movie. But then you begin to watch it, and you're like, ah! Count me for that. Doesn't really work. Savannah, I dropped the bean again. No, it fell out first, and then I dropped it by accident. Again, it's slippery feeling. No. No. I'm not gonna make Savannah, and really, is that where we're at in life? Do we always have to ask you a hundred times? All right. You and I. <laughs> All right. So let me see. Um, let me see here. Blah, 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 blah. I watch scary movies with the lights off. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> right. Scary movie is good. Nobody's uh, ever seen a movie. Let me see Thank here. You. Thank you, admins. You guys rock. Kenner, Lucid Dreamer. Lucid Dreamer. That sure is an awesome uh, name, by the way. Do you know what Lucid Dreaming is? Nope. But I like the name. Of, I like the way it sounds. It is where you are physically 
not physically, but you yep. are mentally aware you were dreaming. Um, let's see here. What are your thoughts on the Australian Shepherd? I'm looking into breeding them. Personally, I don't have um I don't find that that is a good breed for me. The energy is way too high. I don't I don't like the anxiousness, you know what I mean? Oh, I can't take it. But hey, you know what? Um, if you like them, that's all that matters. There are always going to be people that like them. My mom had one. She liked it. So um, just for me personally, eh, I, don't, I don't, you know, I just personally don't, can't do it. Um, let me see here. Let me see. Have you heard of chemical castration on dogs? What's your opinion? I have not heard of a chemical castration other than using like, um, oh, what do they call them? Like birth control. They have another word, contraception. They call it contraception. Personally, I have found that most of the animals that have health problems are ones that have been kept on contraception. Uh, I have not told the husky story yet, so let me go ahead and talk about that. Um, I'll still do a video on it, but so. Louder. I don't know if they can hear you. What? I mean, I would speak louder just in case, oh, so they can hear the whole story and all that. Oh, I think they can hear me. I don't hear everybody saying they can't. So, um, so the husky story is this: there was a uh, what is it, a three or four year old little boy, who put his hand under the fence of his neighbor's yard with a sock on his hand, and he got his hand bit off by these huskies, these two huskies. Now. They look like puppies, both of them. One of them for sure is a puppy. The other one probably looks like a puppy too. It's a white one. Um, and so they want to put the dogs down. And uh, and it's just like, I don't think that that's appropriate. They're not, as far as I understand it. I mean, they're puppies, first of all. A four-year-old's hand, I think when most people visualize a child losing their hand, I think they're visualizing like a larger hand. And so they're thinking that I, I think people think a lot more goes into it. But, um, you know, a four-year-old's hand is, is, a, is, is very tiny. You know, a dog could very easily take that off. Especially and, with the sock on. Yeah, and like, especially we don't know, like, was the kid out there messing with them? Like, was he running around? Where were the parents? Um, how many times is the child out there kind of amping the dogs up? You know, we don't let people keep our dogs in the backyard because it increases territorial behavior. If I ever get somebody who comes to me and says, hey, you know, my dog is aggressive and he's in the backyard and he's barking at people and this and that, I always tell them, there's no fixing that until you bring the dog in. Either that or, a, or you're gonna have to use a shock collar on him. And I personally, you know, I personally just, well, we'll just leave that at be. But having said that, you're going to increase territorial and aggressive behaviors when you leave dogs outside. Having said that, when a dog is already amped up and then you, you, you know, you put something out, the dog's just gonna grab at it. He's not thinking, you know, he's just gonna grab at it. And it doesn't take much, you know, to unfortunately to do that to a, to a toddler. So I can't fault the dogs for it. I don't think that that's a sign that those are aggressive or dangerous dogs. I had somebody on my Facebook, not on my Facebook, but they posted about it. And they were like, if you don't like this, then eat a explicit. And I was just like, okay, like, you know, the dog, it's not like the kid was in their yard. The dog was in its yard. It probably couldn't even see the kid. It just saw something come underneath. It probably didn't know. Like it just probably saw movement, but it may not have known that it was an actual child. It could have been a mouse for all that. So it just, they just, yeah. And, and Huskies have a very high prey drive. Um, so I just can't fault the dog personally. I think it's wrong that they're trying to put those dogs down. I think it's an emotional response. I think that in general, people want to um, kind of kill, you know, destroy anything that causes damage um, or, or harm to a human. And I think that that's a bad reaction, what we call like a knee jerk reaction. Um, I, it sucks, but I genuinely think that the, that it's just a, a sad story, but I don't think those dogs should be put down. There is a petition to save the lives of those dogs. Um, I don't have it on me, but if you see it, then please do, you know, um, you know, take a look and, and see, um, you know, see, sign it or whatever, if you, if you feel so inclined. So, but that's, that's just my opinion. And I wanted to touch on it. Her opinion matters. So what's opinion, what's your opinion on people selling their mutts as much as a purebred? I may not like it, but the truth is if people are willing to pay for it, then people are going to do it. So as soon as buyers 
stop paying that much for mixed breed dogs and people will stop selling mixed breed dogs for a lot of money. They'll bring down the price as much as they need to to sell them. Uh, let me see here. Uh, yes, Gabby, I would um, I would say that you would need to get your female spayed if you're wanting to get a male. I, I would say that spaying a female is, in my opinion, better than neutering a male. Just my opinion. Um, so, let me see here. Or you can even do what she was talking about where you save the... Um, was it the um, how are people certain uh, whenever we got trolled last time I um, put some people as moderators so that's why um, Liberty did knock herself out thank God right <laughs> she's crazy look at her back there um, yeah. yes I agree Christina I really hope that they do not put those dogs down they certainly don't deserve it um, let's see here do I have a name for my new stud yet? Yes, his name is Batista, which means, if I'm not mistaken, masculine in uh, Italian. And it's also like a translation for almost like Baptist, like John the Baptist, which I thought was really cool. Somebody said something about a uh, um, wrestler. Why is that yeah, if you want to start a breeding pack, would you get a stud or your female first? I think that you should go with what you can find. If you go looking for a male, um, you may not find a nice male, but there may be a lot of, thank you, ma'am, but there may be a lot of really beautiful females. So I think it's really important that you be open to finding the highest quality animals that you can find. Ideally, because a female takes so much longer to mature as far as breed ability, you would probably want to start off with a female. Males can be bred as early as seven, eight months, as long as you get their health testing done. You can get a pen hip score done. You can do OFA prelims on a dog. You can do the heart, the eyes, all that stuff. And you can even show a dog um, as early as six months of age and get them championed in time. A female cannot breed until she's at least 16 months, uh, which is after the first heat. There are people that breed at first heat. I personally don't agree with it. A female is not done growing at that time. Females are usually done growing at around 16 months. They just don't take as long as males do. So um, that's why we wait for the maturity of the of mental maturity and physical maturity of the female. So I'll answer here. questions, not answer, but I'll ask questions. Um, let me see here. Oh wow! I'm so sorry, Nikki. Um, I'm really happy that our video helped. But I, this ne it's never a good day, and I'm real sorry to hear that. Um, e. M. Diaz, I bought a Connie Corso, but instead of being thick like I like, like I thought he would be, he's really skinny. What do you think happened? I've tried a lot of things to make him gain weight. If you don't see the bones on that dog, stop trying to put weight on him. They are not supposed to be thick. If you want a thick dog, go get a bully dog. Go get a South African Mastiff. Go get a French Mastiff. Go get an English Mastiff. You know, uh, go get an American Bulldog. There's tons of thick, big dogs. Connie Corso is not supposed to be one of them. Preacher, it depends on how old the dog is, but also is like, Preacher was the scrawniest puppy like, he was scrawny, remember? He was, like, almost like a... Yeah, yeah. He, he looked like a, I don't know, his head and his body just didn't compare to each other, and then he grew up, yeah. you know? So, for the Lepto vaccine, uh, I've heard a lot of really horrible things about it, but most of the time it's small dogs. Um, you know, um, I don't know, I'm... I don't take my dogs out as much. I don't know how I feel about that one. I think it's a personal decision that you have to make for yourself. I think if you have a small dog, the odds are that um, you may run into problems. Um, vaccinations often are harder on small dogs. I'm a part of a lepto um, vaccine, vaccination group on Facebook where they talk about all the horrible things that it's caused. And usually when you see a death, it's a small dog. You have to weigh it on your own to see whether or not you think that it's worth it or not. Um, let me see here. What do you think of PETA? Um, PETA, so a lot of people don't know this, but PETA is an organization that believes that dogs are slaves. 
they don't believe that anyone should own animals any more than another human being should be owned. And they call it speciesism. Like we have racism, well, they have speciesism, which basically is you trying to say that another species is somehow less valuable than ours. And while that all sounds great and all that, ultimately they kill animals as a way of like freeing them from their slavery. So um, a lot of people donate to PETA while PETA goes and kills, it's something to the tune of like 90%, even probably higher than 90% of the animals that they actually get in. It's a scam. Uh, it's extremists. Um, it's something that that should be defunded and deplatformed. The fact that they exist means that I think it's an excellent example of how people will kind of donate to something like they want to feel good about doing something. So they just blindly donate to something that they think is good, not really doing the research. And and so those people are capitalizing on that. But ultimately, like they even got prosecuted for driving in a street taking a little girl's chihuahua off her porch and euthanizing it. And they euthanized it, like, I want to say that day. Like, they're real quick about it. They just kill, kill, kill. You can even read the head the head lady of PETA. I read something about her where she talked about how she would come into work early and just start euthanizing dogs and just euthanize. I couldn't believe it. So, yeah, like, like if that. you love animals... Don't ever support anyone that supports PETA. Let them know the reality and call them out for the crazy people they are and shun them. Shame them, shun them. So, <laughs> all right. So, um, let me see here. Yeah, yeah, they did. They even, you know, another thing that they did, PETA did, I was just thinking about this. They, I forget what country it was, but they let a bunch of um, mink out. And mink are one of these animals that like are very high prey drive. They just kill, 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 and they like decimated the um, the natural area around them because they released all these animals. It was insane. Um, Alicia Cobb, thank you very much. Um, need to teeter test before vaccinations to tell you if your dog is immun still immunized so you don't overvax. Yes. Not everyone has teeter testing available to them, but if you do, you should definitely use it. It is an excellent way of limiting the amount of vaccines that your dog is exposed to. So I highly, highly recommend it. There's a lot of new things that we're finding out about um, that will keep your dog healthy, and that's definitely one of them. If you can afford it, definitely do it. So, um, it's, yes, even, yeah, the Steve Irwin thing that they did. Yeah, that was, but that's them. That's what they do. They're, they're like trolls. They go for the extreme. You know, they're always going for the extreme. They're like the original trolls. Here, I'll ask you if you want. So, um, okay, there you go. Yes, while well, I actually can do my coffee. It's the reason the, the milk didn't like no, Just because you always keep the spoon too far away. I didn't keep it that far. Are you single? Question mark, exclamation mark. Are you a vet? Just your opinion. <laughs> yes. You usually need to make a start with that. I'm single. Yeah, you have a little tiny corso. Any dots? Any thoughts? Blue, kind of corso? What about them? What, any thoughts on them? Yeah, they said blue, kind of like I'm guessing they're asking about the color blue, kind of corso. Yeah, I like it. It's actually called gray. Hey, really? Cash gray? put it. No, it's called gray in the standard. Um, I come from pit bulls. We call it blue, so I often call it blue. But I don't have a problem with it. I'm not, since I used to have pit bulls, I'm not as, like, infatuated with the color blue as I think a lot of people are. But it is a pretty color. It's just, like, for me, black all day. Like, every dog, all black all day. That's he said, um, that's what I want. The dude that asked if you were single, he said veteran. Haha, <laughs> not a veteran. Not a veteran. You don't know how to say veteran? No. Or no, veterinarian? Veterinarian, sorry. It was like yeah. so many yeah. letters pushed together. Well, thank like, you for your service. Um, thank you for your service. All right. How deep is the bond between Preacher and Cashmere? Was their bond instant, or did it take some time? Really? Why is my cat in there screaming? She was totally fine. She's meow! She was meow! totally fine. She's got food, too. And now she's, like, all right in there. She's like, save me! So you're single. 
She is single. But I'm watching you. You better be a vet. So now she's quiet. He said, so you're single. Yes, I am. I, I was like, yes, she is single. But I've got mine. You wouldn't want to date me anywhere anyway. I hardly have time to do anything. I'm always too busy. Um, do you have an opinion on this whole red pit bull argument going on all the time? What red pit bull argument? I haven't heard anything about a red pit bull argument. Our dog was, uh, our dog was red. Like red nose? Oh, I miss my kitty. Um, I'm sorry about that. Somebody said, um, probably Hulk. They're probably talking about Hulk. Yeah. Unless you're a veterinarian, you might as well not waste your time trying. No, that's so not true. <laughs> that's so not true. I don't, I don't even, I don't, I don't even know that I could date a vet because I would be constantly telling him he's wrong on things. <laughs> I would be arguing with him constantly. It wouldn't be good. <laughs> Dude said, I'm not a vet. But I can build, I can build you a swimming pool. Oh, there you go. And not on, not not out here in this limestone. <laughs> Nobody's building nothing out here. You want a pool though? That's the Hmm. When we move, yeah, yeah. But here, no. There's nothing. You're, this saw. I live on a solid rock. Solid rock. Mm. Dog questions. Yep. Uh, Hot. Oh. Hot. Yeah. How do you see, or what's your opinion on the AKC? Um, AKC? Um, so it's hard to blame the AKC for what has happened within the AKC because it's people. The AKC is nothing other than a bookkeeping company. That's all they do is they bookkeep. It's the breed clubs that are the ones that are responsible for changes that are made to the dogs. So, for example, if you go on my website and you look at the post about the boxers, like the will the real boxers they stand up, do you mind cashmere? That was not okay. You keep your hormones to yourself. Midnight? She's just counting around that thing. So... The breed clubs are the ones responsible. So if you look at my post about boxers, you'll see how many times, because I list how many times the standard has changed. And I also show you a timeline of what the dogs look like versus what they look like now. And then I let you know at what year they started being shown. So if you want to judge people for the changes in the breed, you only need to look at the breed clubs responsible for the standard changes, because they're the ones that are allowing it. Um, you said you should bring up PETA. I did bring it up. Oh, recently. Yeah. Um, go ahead. What you were saying? I forget. said all I'm going to say. <laughs> um, uh, what is the breed of the new kitten gender and potential name? What do you want? How dare you assume my kitten's gender? <laughs> Just joking. <laughs> uh, so... Don't you spoil that dog. Mm. You better get down, Cashmere. She's got 12 puppies. Possibly 12 puppies. I'll get you open. You see what I'm up against? I try to train them. She tries to counteract my training. Not fair. Not fair. Rude. Uh, so the cat is a boy. I made sure to get the biggest boy that they had to offer. And they're big cats. Big old um, Highland Lynx cats. Highland, Highland. Highlanders. I don't think I've ever even watched that movie. Uh, I've never heard of it. How would you Maybe. Know? Did I watch it? I don't think so. You guys, what did I tell you? Midnight? Oh, yeah, this question. You never answered it. How deep was the bond between the creature and cashmere? Was there bond instinct, or did it take some time? It took some time. Um... They don't really have like a bond like a lot of people think that they do. Like, like preacher, you know. I will say that Savannah and I noticed that whenever they breed, like they're less. Um, he's actually like sweeter about it. Like he'll lick, he'll like give her kisses. The other ones, he's just like straight to business. That's as close as their bonding gets. <laughs> so 
I mean, even like Cashmere will like try to redo their bond sometimes, as we've seen on camera, where she like comes yeah. around and runs around and plays with him. Yeah. But that's the closest you'll see them. Yeah, Usually, they they will like, they'll flirt they'll run around and flirt but he yeah. doesn't do that with anybody else. The minute they come in, he's like Johnny on the spot. Yeah, right? I will say that like Cashmere and Peach are the two only dogs that I've seen that actually have like other than Blondie and Midnight. Um, because Blondie and Midnight when they see yeah, if you're if you're looking for a bond, Blondie and Midnight have a bond. They have a real bond. They hate being away from each other. Yeah, they don't like long. being away from each other. But those are the only two dogs that I have that I could actually say have a real bond. Like you'll reunite the way them. that like a dog does like with one of us. Yeah. Like you'll reunite them after like them being gone for like a week from each other or even a couple of days. Oh god, yeah. And then that's like, a reunion. Woof, woof. Yeah, they just play and play and it's ridiculous. They'll yeah. Even, like chest bump against each other. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's cute, but it's crazy. <laughs> crazy girls. Yeah. Um, do you like the American molasses? No, molasses. No, I don't. I think it's. I think it's a waste of time, in more ways than one. A, that dog breed never existed. B, if you look back in the history of all breeds, especially large breeds, you will find that they were never as big as they are today because that's not functional, and nobody wants to spend that much feeding a dog. Um, we live in a time of luxury, a time of excess. So of course our dogs are excess, um, uh, fast cars, um, big boats, big houses, big dogs. There you go. Is it better? No, it's not better. Um, but it is what it is. Um, personally, I've said it before and I'll say it again. The world doesn't need another big fat dog. You know what I mean? Like it just doesn't. Who's chewing on what? No, that's not yours. The long awaited question How is your truck doing? It is better. It doesn't smell anymore. I will say that. That's the God's honest truth. I mean, um, we we went out there with the, what is that, Meyer soap. Um, and we, you know, we cleaned the crap literally out of that truck. Um, granted, it's one of those things where, like, you know what happened. So, so I never really feel. Like, it'll never feel the same again, you know? I really just want to get rid of it, um, if I'm being honest. It sucks because it's a beautiful truck, and I really love the truck. I really do. Like, I was actually fixing to have it tuned. Um, and maybe I can figure out. The only thing that bothers me about it that I can't really get to is, like, is like underneath the buttons on my thing. Like, you can't see it, but I know that deep down under there so is nice. some stuff. And I would like to have, if I could just replace my whole driver's door, I'd feel a lot better about it. Um, we do not live in Austin, Texas. I don't live in Austin anymore. I yeah, live, I live in Bertram. Yeah. I like Austin in the sense that it's such a weird place that people don't usually judge you. Like but it's not a really a good place, to, not a good place to live, but it's just wild. Yeah, it's a wild it's place. Wild. Like so, for me, I used to live in Abilene, Texas, and. I had tattoos, and so um, people would give me dirty looks, and I was treated like an um, outcast, and there, um, people there, there wasn't a lot of, like, social stuff to do, so uh, it was very kind of a lonely, it always felt lonely, even when you went to the parks, there's, like, no one there, so. It kind is of, a small place. Yeah, it's just of, a small know? town, and so I don't mind small towns so long as there's natural beauty, but there's nothing in Abilene, it's just... I saw my first tumbleweeds, real tumbleweeds in Abilene. They have dust storms. Lovely. Um, <laughs> Lovely. But uh, not a place that I would ever go to again. If you ever come to Dallas, I want to meet Well, Yeah. We'll be in Dallas. Well, well, no, it's Houston. Oh, it's Houston. I thought it was Dallas. Okay. I was yeah. Sorry. We almost went to Dallas a couple weekends ago because I was going to go with Alex to look at the Toyotas, but he canceled on me. Because you need a man to go get truck here. Yeah. I'm from Katy, Texas. How's Katy, Texas? I've never been there. Texas is way bigger than I thought it was. Yeah, I'm just yeah. used to Austin. Because I've lived there for 14, 13, 12 years. And then um, Houston and. What's up? Other places. Um. 
Where's King Texas? I don't know where Katie Texas, Texas is. I want to say it's like, I want to say it's probably by Abilene, if I'm not mistaken, because I feel like they always have tornado watches. And so they always would tell you every time, like all the places that are on the tornado watch thing. And so you get used to hearing the names of the places that are around you. Outside Houston. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. On Facebook, said Abilene is boring. Yeah, but Abilene is boring. It's very boring. Jesus. It's H E double hockey sticks on Earth is what it is. It is to me. Yeah. I like the lake. I couldn't see. There's no lake in Abilene, Texas. Where? Which one was it? There's no water in Abilene, Texas. <laughs> There's just dirt and mesquite trees and churches and angry people on drugs. That's all there is in Abilene, Texas. No, where is it? Where is the, where's the, where's the lake? Uh, where is your, uh, where is, uh, what's his name? Uh, are you talking about Lake Buchanan? Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 Where is that? Lake Buchanan. I thought that was Abilene. Yeah. No, it's just Lake Buchanan. No, it's not Abilene. No, 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 no. Wait. No, you haven't been to Abilene. No, no, no. I haven't, I You've I never been to Abilene. I, I took you away from there before you were born. <laughs> I saved you. Here. I took her away. I was like, no, you will not be born here. <laughs> she wasn't even born yet. And I was like, man, I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm going to Austin. That was the end of that. Somebody said, uh, Samantha, Texas could be its own country if it wanted to be. And super rich. Yeah, yeah. Did you know that during the time of the recession, that Texas was the 11th strongest economy. That's right. That's right. <clears throat> ever been to El Paso? Hey! Hey! No, I've never been to El Paso. I've heard really horrible things. And that's scary. not to be in any way taken offensively. Um, I've just heard really horrible things. I Actually, back when I was breeding pit bulls, I had a guy who bought a dog from me because he lived in El Paso and... He thought the dog, I told him pit bulls are not known for being protective, but he still wanted it. But he wanted it specifically be for protection. So that's the only info that I have on it. But, you know, there you go. Um, where does, what's his name live? I'm just still trying to figure that out. Where, where is it that, um, what's his name? I can't remember his name. Right. You, uh, what's his name? Uh, Jeremy. 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 Oh, you're so sweet. Uh, what's his name? Where did he live? Where did he live? Where did he live? He lives in Spicewood. Spicewood, that's right. Which is, um, that's Lake, um, that's Pace Bend Lake, or Lake Travis. That's Lake Buchanan. So we said the wrong thing, didn't we? That was, yeah, Lake Buchanan. Maybe Town Lake, Lake Austin. Buchanan Dam, that's what it was. Buchanan Dam, Texas. That was where that lake was. So, can you tell that we don't really know what we're talking about? <laughs> we lived in Texas our whole lives. No, 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 no. You haven't, but I have. That's what I call a doggy noogie. You know how you, you, get, you get your kid and you rub the head? <laughs> I do it with my dogs. Come, come I take their nose and I go. No. Um, what's the best exercise? You guys, really. The best I like to hike with them, not too far. Oh. Hey. hey! I like to hike where there's water so that my dogs can get to water. Oh. And then um, we just do like a walk, you know, just a normal hike. That's my favorite thing. That's what they would be doing in the wild. So. Um, can a new dog take over the alpha one? We've answered that question before. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I will not let them do it um, aggressively. But there are subliminal ways that dogs can show where they are in the hierarchy. And it's happened here. You know, Blondie was like way low on the totem pole when she was younger. And now she's actually moved up. And she does it just by posturing, just by letting them know, hey, you know, you're not going to boss me around. Um, every time one of them, like, if one of them's messing with a toy and then it gets it from the other one. Or if they're on a couch and they make the other one move. Anytime you, one of them forces another dog to do what they want them to do, that is them pushing and becoming more of an alpha. Um, so, yeah, so it, it happens. Uh, I just don't let it happen aggressively. It has to happen over time, um, you know, subliminally, quietly. A note 
to all you people who are complaining about your answer not being questioned or being answered. There are a lot of questions coming in, and yep. I'm just answering during the first ones that I see usually with a question mark. Yeah. Um, Who's by me? Uh, what are you doing? What are you doing? Velocity? 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 I am a young traveling. I am a young traveling in the RV around the country with the life, with this lifestyle. Would you mind selling me a puppy? No, I don't think it's a good idea. I actually know someone who's doing that. And... I, re I learned how easily that that lifestyle can become very unstable, even if it seems stable. Um, there's some people that I know of that that live that way and have a corso, and they're probably going to lose their dog strictly because they're going to have to give it up um, to be able to survive themselves. And I would rather, you know, like, you know, I would rather, like, I guess... You know, I don't know. It would. I. I'm sure that there could be some parameters, but like maybe if you like live off disability and you have like a set income and you're like it's like you're not worried. You know, nothing's changing. Then that's one thing. But if you, hey, hey, what did I say? Woman, did you hear me? So, no, you're quitting, guys. You're quitting. I'm not going to ask questions that have already been answered in this live stream. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. Go so back. I'm gonna get you. Watch some stuff if you really want to know the answer. Um, you off my cat. Will you make a calendar for your dogs? Um, maybe if I can find out how to do it. The the merchandise people that I'm using don't have a calendar option. Uh, I'm gonna need to get a few minutes. Somebody, the person, uh, this Penelope Tan, $5, said, check out the corner. I can swear I saw something move. You probably saw Liberty. Because everybody's freaking out because they're, I think Liberty's under the couch. Let me see if I can get her out. No, she's not. It's probably the cat by the look of it. Is she out? Yeah. For Preacher to be watching, it means the cat's out. Yeah. Watch this. Watch. Watch how they act. Yeah. So you see that? That's the sound. For the cat is out and she shouldn't be. <laughs> See, I but she can't get out with them acting like that. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I'm surprised she's not like meowing really loud right now. Hey, I swear, no, ma'am. Get down now. Get down. Meow. Yeah, she's Meow. Over there. I think she's there. See, she calls to me. She only likes me. Everybody, come here. People want to see you. Get, 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 get. Ah, midnight, leave it be. Everyone back off now. Back off now. Preacher, move. Now. Back. Back. Everyone get back now. Go. All right. Whatever. I don't care. Let her out. Oh, she's running. Zombie. Read it. She's back in. Ah! <laughs> she got me. Good Oh, she's so sweet. She is. She's so sweet. I couldn't run away from the kisses. Hey, you good boy. You got the cat. You're a good boy. You're a good boy. You're a good boy. He said, Mom, the cat was out. I was just trying to get her because she's not supposed to be out of the room. And I told her, and she didn't listen to me, and she went on the couch. And I was just trying to make sure and hope you're not mad at me. You know what I'm saying? Because I was trying to do what I was supposed to do. She licked my face so much. <laughs> All right, sit down. Um, <laughs> she's got such a block head. Who? Yeah, she does. Yeah, she's gonna have a real nice head. She's just a baby. She's a huge baby. And when when you have a really big dog that is a baby, their proportions are often really off until they actually grow into it. What? Get off my kid! No! No! Preach to give me a kiss. I said no. Don't you get on my counter? You can get on me, but don't get on my counter. I do. Man, have questions. That is a dog. I'm sorry. Would you ever get a bulldog? Dog everywhere. This person keeps on asking this I was going to get an old English bulldog, but I, um, the breeder uh, was not a good breeder, and so she ended up just refunding my money after like a year almost. Um, so um, that kind of really turned me off of the breed, to be honest with you. Um, so... 
you know, I may look into getting one again someday. I wanted to breed healthy old English bulldogs. Um, but unfortunately there's a lot of people in it that are just breeding for color and wide chests and things like that. Big old heads. They're not really trying to breed healthy dogs. So anyway, it's a high risk thing. It's hard to find good dogs. I better get out of it. Will Blondie and uh, if, well, Blondie and Midnight go and eat around the same time? If so, will you have to breed them at the same time? Yep. Cashmere or uh, Midnight quit. Hey. Help. Need tips for what did I tell you? separation. You think I'm playing and I'm not? Go lay down now. Would you buy a car rather than a truck? No. 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 Uh, Jesse James, what was your question before? And I'll tell you why. Because of the road I live on. I live on a dirt road. It's got lots of holes in it. Ruin a car. I would. It would ruin a car. I would bottom out. And once you go truck, you never go back. What do you earn from winning shows? Nothing other than points, ribbons, and um, titles. I, I think actually if you show with certain people, you actually get money. But I, I don't think that's the case with AKC per se. Uh, so we need to go outside. Are any other breeds, or are you interested in breeding any other dogs in the future? Like any other breeds? Uh, not at this time. Is that a question? No. I'm going to uh, thank you, Alicia Cobb. I think that's how you say her name. Uh, she, uh, she said, uh, I don't know if this is a question. I can't really understand. It says, is 27 in too tall for 10-month-old female, 95 pounds? That's about it. Um, I, I would have to see the dog. It depends on the dog, you know. Um, you can't ever judge a dog's weight based on something as simple as height and weight um, as whether or not it's appropriate. You have to see the dog. I always tell people, look at the dog. Do you see ribs? Do you see hip bones? Do you see backbone? You know, like with Preacher, I don't know if you can tell. Kind of just put the, put the screen down a little bit. Okay. You know I mean? Yeah. You can see him, but yes. So you see here how on his butt, you can see, go away. You can see, go. I said now. We'll also get um, you can see here how he has this indent here, and even then it the goes light. out to his hips. Yeah, even the light right? shines down on that. Yeah, like you can see this. You want to be able to see this. It shouldn't just be, get now. It shouldn't just be solid all the way, right? It should not be smooth. You should see the, the shape of the body. You don't want to see the pointing out of the hip bones themselves unless you have something like, um, a greyhound or another kind of sight hound or possibly even um, like some Great Danes are built that way. Um, with him, you can't actually see any backbone, but you can feel it. If you take your finger, you can, you, you literally, you shouldn't be able to run it across smoothly. Your finger should bounce off of the backbone, right? That's, you see how I'm, I'm, I'm bouncing off of it? You should, that. you should be able to, to, to feel that. It should be right there right underneath the skin, right? So we have this here, it goes in, we have our hip bones, even though we can't see them, we can actually see where they are. We've got, it comes in here, we've got our butt here. If you look from the side, thighs, here we can see, you can see rib here, especially if you're looking above. I can see, I've got one, two, I can very easily feel the ribs. And then also when we talk about tuck up, this is what we're looking at. We want to have a waist. It should come up, tuck up into the body, okay? You can see here he's got a nice waist here. Um, those are all things that you're going to look for um, in a healthy dog. He's used to this because he's been shown before. But he's talking about how he's really good at, like, standing still and all that. You know, go, he's go been back. shown. Let's raise that back up. Let's see if we can get that kind of right there. Liberty, come. See if I can't answer some questions myself. Now, I 
No, I said go lay down. Crazy lady. No, they say Rachel makes. Oh, wait, never mind. No, get down. Stop. Thank you, guys. We've got Mitcha Hopkins, $5. Would you be open to a private video chat to give advice as well as training tips? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, I wouldn't have a problem with that at all. Um, I um, have basically let my job know that I'm quitting. Um, because of everything that I do at my job, it's very difficult for them to just replace me right away because I did so many things there. Um, so we're in that process, um, but when I do that, I'm going to put together a fee sheet that will be for all the things that I will be able to do, whether it be phone consultations, whether it be video consultations, whether it be um, a training where I work with your dog or a pack walk. Sometimes people will bring their dog over and they'll have their dog with my dog and we do a pack walk. So there are multiple things that I do and we'll be um, basically putting together a fee schedule for. It just is going to, I can't commit to that right now because I still have my current job. And so I, I, I can't, it's very difficult to prioritize my time when I still work from eight to five every day. So once that um, is, is uh, finalized, at that point, I will then be able to take on much more work. And I even want to start doing workshops where I drive um, and go to different towns and stuff. And I um, can kind of help multiple people at once. You guys. Crazy dogs. Hey. Oh, the cat's out again. Oh, she's out. You can see her in the back. She's quite happy. Liberty, Liberty quit. Angelic. Shh, Liberty. Liberty. Yeah. What's my favorite breed of dog? Um, Blondie, even though she's like, you know, she's a kind of torso, but like her temperament isn't like most kind of torso, so mm -hmm. I don't know if I could really say it'd be kind of torso. They asked me, what was my favorite breed of dog? Liberty? Leave uh -huh. the cat alone. Now, go. Liberty can get a little too excited about the cat. Mm -hmm. She doesn't hurt her. The cat sticks up for herself. Down. Now. Down. Midnight. And you, down. Leave my cat alone. Midnight, get over here now. Come here. Yes. Down. I do. All the way. Midnight, all the way. All the way down. That's bad. Oh, that's bad. Leave my cat alone. Quit. She try to come up. Quit. Quit. Poor velocity. Leave my cat alone. What do you mean, with poor velocity? Somebody said Blondie has the heart of a golden retriever. She does. Yeah. <laughs> she does. She definitely does. Midnight is a lot like her father. Um, so the thing is, a lot of people would say, I've seen so many comments, if your dogs were really trained, they would listen the first time. Yeah, well, you obviously don't have a corso. <laughs> they don't listen the first time. Um, if, you, if you have a treat, then yeah, sure, they'll listen the first time. But if you don't have a treat and they don't think you have a treat, then no, they're not going to. They're individuals, they're not robots. Um, hey, what did I say? Would you uh, host a meet and greet? Blondie? Where your fans can meet at the local, local dog park? Uh-huh. Midnight? No. She not only is the dog whisperer, but she's the cat talking. I do like to talk to my cats. <laughs> 
Midnight. To um, a surprising fact about Blair is Blair or whatever your name is, Blondie quits. <laughs> Quit. Go lay down. Is um, Blair? Is Normal, that- normally, I don't let my cat out just because she escaped that last time, but I'm letting her out right now. The reason I'm having to get onto my dogs is because they know she's not allowed out and they always want to put her back in the room. So I'm actually asking them to do something that is completely opposite of what I've been asking them to do over a long period of time, which is why they're having a harder time with it than uh, than you would think. Yeah. And you can see she doesn't care. Yeah. <laughs> so. Surprising fact about her is she's actually quite the cuddler. Yeah, I don't think they can see her either. She's like right behind me. Yeah, she's right there. Yeah, the light. Right there. Her, I'm not pointing right. Uh, right. Go. Minute, go lay down. It's kind of hard to point because I can't make right there. Because it's not even pointing right there. Right over there. Yeah. She said, when you're telling your dog to chill is me with my kids. She, she'll just keep talking back. It's so funny. Sorry. I'm not going to sit here and meow my cat the whole time. Answer questions. Or ask questions. Which dog is best with the cat? Cashmere, she doesn't care. Yeah. She'll even cuddle with her. No, they That's all cool. cuddle with her. They all cuddle with her. But well, Cashmere, she cuddles with them. She'll find Cashmere doesn't care. Everybody else wants to be the one to put the cat away. You know what I mean? They know better than to touch her. Like, they will not touch her. But they will, like, mob her to get her to go where she needs to go. It's funny because, like, if they catch her in a corner, then everybody just stands there watching. Like, one of those pointer dogs are just, like, watching. Um, but she can't go anywhere, so it's like it's kind of pointless. So they're not they're not as good at herding in the sense that they don't herd like they'll herd her back in the room. But if she's already out of the room and she gets into like an she's area, right then um, then she will get caught up. Really, cat? Ah! Wait. What do you mean? No. Um, Christina, funny thing about uh, the what do you think of the name Moxie? Well, I had a cat named Moxie. She was stolen. <laughs> really? She was one of my favorite cats, and I loved her to death. And somebody, I... and somebody stole her. Well, okay, stories, but it's really not. She was the kind of cat that if I came out and I called for her, she came running to me with love like a dog. I said, like, I love you. But Don't the thing is, is that she came from a bad home on our street. And I was walking to school, and there was a bunch of kittens, her and her siblings. So I took the cat because she liked me. So um, I took her because she was a little kitten, and she saw me every day whenever I was walking home from school. So eventually, I don't know. there's the buffering from the middle of your relationship. You and Savannah. first time tonight for me. Let it go, frozen, froze, frozen. How do you fix it once it freezes? Wait, I don't think it's frozen anymore. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Well, how do you know? You refresh? Try to, yeah, it's back, it's back, it's back. Oh, it's back. Oh, so you don't? It's back. Hmm. It's fine, leave it on. It's the circle of death. That's so funny. Yeah, it is the circle of death. Done. We're good. We're back. See, everybody's like back trying to refresh. Can we send you fan art of your dogs? Yes, I would love fan art. Love it. In fact, I was even thinking today about doing a contest for um, like a t-shirt. So like somebody sending me um, some fan art. Maybe we could even do like a top three kind of thing. Um, I think that would be pretty cool. So maybe I, I would draw them. But- I don't know how. So maybe I'll do an announcement for that. Um, Who's licking my leg? Can next week, I'm probably like, Velocity. Yep, Velocity. Licking my foot. Um, so, so yeah, so we'll probably do something like that because I'd really love to see. I've seen some really cool stuff that people have made, and I would like to see more. But just keep in mind, we want it to be um, in such a way that it could be put onto stuff. You know what I mean? So keep that velocity, in mind. Velocity, that doesn't I'm 
How did you start putting your dogs in some submissive posture? Um, I start from a very, very probably around six weeks, but um, just keep in mind it's not something that I'm doing. Midnight. It's something that they do. Midnight. That's a bad dog. Uh, would you like me to take you out on a date? <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> uh, I don't know you, Tony, so I don't, I don't know. There's <laughs> no way for me to know that. You're a vet. Um... Would you sell to the UK? Or is yeah, I would sell. I would sell to the UK. You just have to figure out the shipping and all that. You know what I mean? I just need to be able to drop the dog off at the airport, and you have somebody um, set up to do that. And then I would need to know what the requirements. Whoa, Savannah. Bro, Basil. I have a sticker. No, you don't. Whammon. I'm coming to the sticker. Somebody said yikes. He's crap. No, I mean he's he's creeps. Sorry. <laughs> I, Mix two words together. Okay. Um, can we send our via Instagram? She doesn't check. No, her Instagram I don't check. I don't check my Instagram DMs. Uh, but then again, you still don't check those. I had to show you that one that somebody sent on Instagram and on your tagging post, like the people who tagged you. Remember the picture of preacher. I time? will set up an email to send them to. Or you can do like specifically a for that. I will do like an art submission email for for them to be sent to. I don't check my Instagram because I get way too many too many emails and way too many quit midnight. Stop it. Leave her alone. Mm. Do I, um, I just I get way too many and I can like some people are like ask really dumb stuff it's just a waste of time a lot of time I mean if you know if you're in there and you're saying something nice I appreciate it but it's much more effective if it's just you know in the comment section because ultimately I you know just haven't had the best um do you have people box? contacting me on Instagram. It's just been kind of weird. They said you got a PO box for the artwork. You I can do. Send it through this box. I do. What are you doing, my, my PO box is. Uh, what are you doing? Is PO box one six six zero Liberty Hill, Texas seven eight six four two. Oh, she said, don't touch me. How old is your mom? None of your business. I'm somewhere after 35. I stopped counting. Her birthday was recently. Like, I'm somewhere around month. there. I love that, that that message was deleted too, by the way. I read it before it was deleted. It wasn't even me that deleted it. I think like, she's like, I don't trust you. Looking at me. She's got such an attitude right now. She's got her gangster face on. She's gonna slowly come over. Somebody said you are gorgeous. Thank you. I'm waiting for the questions. So you can see she's like all about the love. They said you look fantastic, Rachel. You look like you could be one of my 18 year old friends. <laughs> Thank you. That's from not knowing my age. You can't feel your age if you don't know it. What's up, Pat? Go away. Blondie, go away. I'm not making your own YouTube channel. No. That's the last thing she needs. <laughs> What's your favorite part about being an only child? I don't care for being. Cat, don't child. get up there. Don't let her up there. She's gonna jump up She's there. She's like, I'm about to go say hi to the camera. She's gonna jump up there. There's no stopping her at that point. She's gonna jump. <laughs> Crazy cat. Oh gosh, she's gonna get up on my fridge. She's like, I'm gonna get there up there. There she goes. 
Yeah. And she's up. She's On to my horses. <laughs> really, dude? Just leave my horses alone. <laughs> <She's just looking. laughs> oh, God. She's going to knock my horses down. Oh, my God. She, <laughs> she thinks she can get up there. She's like, no. Oh. Yeah, you're gonna get that. You're a crazy cat. Hold on, let me see if I can get. No, that. leave her alone, dude. Leave her alone. No way. Let me see if I can get the. She's fixing it. Again. Yeah, but she's fixing it down. Meow. 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 She's about to go up there if we're not careful. She's gonna say hi to the camera if we're not careful, you guys. Meow. Meow. Preacher, go down. Preacher. Midnight. Leave her alone. She's literally I'm checking the questions. doors. Uh, what's your favorite YouTuber to watch? This is the first question I saw. It depends. I watch all kinds of stuff. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Don't you dare, cat. Don't She's you like, dare. Oh, so she so she knows that sound. They know that sound. She almost jumped up on the on my on my computer. What's it about cats and wanting to sit on computer keyboards? They um, like the buttons or whatever. It's like they like the warmth. So I watch a lot of like I watch a lot of stuff on on there. I watch a lot of animal documentaries. I watch Paternity Court. I listen to a lot of Jordan Peterson talks. <laughs> so it's up it's past somebody's bedtime. No, take that off right now. Why? Do you have any idea of the things that will be said? That take it off. I already had it on. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> How big will the Savannah cat be as an adult? You don't know. She's already she an adult. She is an yeah, adult. She's an adult. She's not. The Savannah cats are only big when they're when they have more serval in them. Uh, she is what's called an SBT, meaning that she is, I believe it is five generations of Savannah cat hybrid bred together. So. She's what? less serval, more just Savannah cat. Creature's nudging in my arm. It's he does that. Noise. Creature, quit, quit. Don't be pushing people around. You know the door. You know he it. knows how big his head is. No. I'm waiting for questions to come in. No. She's going to find <laughs> You're so funny. You're just a sweetheart. Who did you go beat the Which way? With your big old fat head. Is she a new cat or the same one as the old house? Oh, she's no. always been. Look at how pretty she is over there. She's a real pretty cat. I will say that. Um, she's a she's. I've had her for a while now. Heidi the Corso, thank you for ten dollars. Um, thank you. Love all the knowledge you share. Would you consider mentoring someone uh, interested in breeding, or uh, how does one find a mentor who would uh, who has been in the breed for a while? It's so political in this breed. Um. So I wouldn't have a problem mentoring people once I don't have my current job anymore because it's just a time constraint. Um, but, yeah, it's definitely something that I would be open to doing. Um, Reese and I are probably going to set up some type of um, some type of, of different channel for, like, talking about a lot of different stuff. But one of the things that we're going to um, allow is for people to, like, submit a dog for critique. And so – um, and I've also had people that have paid me to basically give them an opinion on a dog, um, things like that. So it just depends, you know what I mean? Um, as far as mentorship concerns, um, I definitely do understand that it is political. And I think that it's even one of those things where just because somebody's been doing it a long time doesn't necessarily mean that, that they are all that great at it. Um, I think that that's one of the reasons that you see so many different kinds of Corso is because you have a bunch of breeders who think that their dogs are the best dogs and they keep breeding dogs that look like the kind of dogs that they like. Um, and so you get these all different kinds of looking dogs. So they're going to tell you to do what they do and it may not be what is best for the breed and it may not be what is actually the breed standard. So it's a very important thing to consider. What I breed is what I consider to be closest to the standard, healthy, maintains function. Um, I don't breed what, what I personally like to see in a dog as far as like colors and type and things like that. I'm looking at the, the, the pedigrees, looking at the dogs 
and breeding towards that. So it's not necessarily me as so much as it's me breeding towards that correct type. So if you find that you like a different type of dog than I do, then you would want to be mentored by somebody who has the kind of dogs that you like. Um, because there are so many different kinds, you know, like you wouldn't want to come to me and have me critique like big old Belmonte dogs, you know, or like that guy Roughhouse's dogs, because I'm not going to have anything positive to say. So those, you know, that's important to, to take into consideration. <laughs> Quit. Preacher, get out of it now. Now, I said, move. Preacher? Did you hear what I said? Go. Okay. Um, do a video of you and Savannah with makeup. <laughs> so, um, I had a, like so many people ask me to do makeup tutorials that I have considered starting a separate channel for that. Um, whether or not I continue it or not, will have a lot to do with how it works. I personally don't really know how to record something like that. Except you, no makeup videos. Please. So, yeah, so um, I will put them on this channel. Okay, I'm not going to do that. I will start a separate channel for that. If it is successful, if people want to watch it, then we'll see. Um, I do enjoy doing my makeup, as you can tell. I love makeup. I learned how to do my makeup from watching. So I do see the value in it. I just don't know how successful it would be. Savannah, what did I say? Thank you. Um, so anyway, so we'll just see. The reason I don't want you is, do you know what that looks like? Yeah, exactly. You know, I don't even have to tell you. Don't give people incentives to do things like, to say things like that. It's YouTube, for God's sake. <sighs> Questions? Did you answer the last one? Um, thank you. 65 Adventures More. Uh, hi from New Zealand. Really love your channel. When I try to get onto your website, it says access temporarily limited due to security reasons. Why did I, uh, did I miss something? Free security will uh, 14 p.m. Saturday night. We probably just need to adjust our settings on it. I know we have like security software on it, and I think that it limits um, people like un unduly. And so I'm going to have to take a look at it because I've heard that a lot. So I need to, because I, I built my own website, but I don't do the server side stuff. And so I think that that's um, what's going to need to be adjusted. So um, I have my website up on the server of the company that I currently work for because I work for my family's company. So they just let me host my site on there. And we have a network administrator that handles all that kind of stuff. So um it's something that I'm going to need to talk to him about, um, and I'll try to get it adjusted. I'm sorry about that. Was your hair always black, Rachel, or did you dye it? I dye it. Yeah, so my hair's really yeah, my hair's naturally like a dark brown, but um, not this color. Yeah. I dyed it black when I was like 15 for the first time. And then she stayed black. For and then, a long time, and then you went well, I had it. I had it black. I had it black, and then I went red, and then I had a dream of my hair black, and it and I remembered. Like in my dream, I was just like so beautiful. Like, and this is this is just me being honest with you, okay? That was my dream, as that I was just so beautiful with my hair black. And I'm not joking. That day, I went and dyed my hair black, and it's been black ever since. I've had moments where I've done it other colors, but truth be told, like recently, within the last ten years, I tried to go back to my natural color, trying to embrace me, and. And it wasn't me. I've had black hair for so long now that it is me. You know what I mean? It's people don't even recognize me anymore without it. And um, and it works. So, yeah. So it's not natural, but it's me. Someone said, my dog and would fish sounds in her sleep. Should I be concerned? And someone said, what's a fish sound? Probably slurping, probably nursing sound. Yeah. Oh, it's a, lot of dogs, a lot of dogs will nurse in their sleep, especially when they're younger. They're like, oh, mom. Um, happy birthday, Gregory Field. Happy birthday, Gregory. Mm, the color suits you well. It was a good dream. Yeah. I'm telling you, I think it had to do with, like, I'll be honest with you also. Um, I was always, because I was in 
there. They like to medications out. So I was like, if you think I'm fat now, you can see nothing yet. I was huge, clinically obese whenever I was in high school and stuff. And, um, and so one year I learned how to do my makeup and I actually had one year where I had a pretty picture, a high school picture. It was so pretty, in fact, that I showed it to one of my classmates and he was like, that's not you. And I was like, yes, it is. That's me. And he was like, he looked at it and he's like, you should wear makeup more often. <laughs> I've never forgotten that. Never forgotten it. And I've never, I never, I always appreciated his honesty. I've ne- other people were like, oh, and I was like, no, oh, man, he was honest with me. But I have long black hair in that picture. And uh, I think it makes I think it I think it makes my eyes look prettier. I think you need to know who you are. You need to know what you have and learn to work and accent things that are good about you, you know? And black hair does accent my eyes. It makes them look greener than what they are. I have hazel eyes, but they can look greener. So the black does that. So when I had that dream, it was based off of that high school picture. And I was just like, I needed because I got picked on so much, I needed to be pretty. And so I was like, well, I'm gonna go and and you know dye my hair black, and it's just ever since then it's just been makeup and black hair. <laughs> so <laughs> high school bullying for you. <laughs> so Miss uh, Reese Justice says, let's talk about Lonnie's new stud. Yes, shall we? Uh, so <laughs> which would be her dog? Yeah, which would be her dog? Um, so her male. Yes, world champion pedigree for the people that are getting on the list for Blondie. You're very, very lucky. Um, we weren't even planning on doing this. I never could have anticipated that Reese would just allow me to use him as a stud, but very nice, solid male, literally the size of Preacher. Um, very solid, nice bone on him. Amazing European pedigree. Very rare dogs in his pedigree. Dogs that a lot of people don't have. Um, like I said, if you if you like Liberty, that's her dad. I mean, amazing, amazing dog. His name is Achilles. He's over five years old, no health problems at all. Um, Just a phenomenal, phenomenal dog. I've met him in person. His temperament is on point. Uh, We wanted to find balance because he has a working temperament. He's a very, very um, good dog, but he's the kind of dog that isn't going to put up with anything. And he's very protective. And so mixed with Blondie's very sweet temperament will create a very balanced temperament. And... um, just overall, their structure and everything is going to be on point. I have nothing but the highest expectations for that litter um, to the point that it kind of makes me mad that I didn't reserve some puppies off of it. But we'll just, I'll just, you know, beg her for a repeat. <laughs> and I'll keep mine out of the next one. So, yeah. So, those of you that are actually on that list for that litter, um, you guys got real lucky because we were not expecting anything of that caliber to breed her with. So, um, yeah, very, I mean, I'm not joking, world champion. A lot of people have AKC champions here in the States, world champion pedigrees on this dog. Um, so, yeah, like pedigree to die for. Uh, Rachel, did you hear about the new species of orca it was recently discovered? Mm-hmm. Those are the ones that have the really tiny white sliver, right? Like it's like more s- smaller, narrower. Um, I did I did see about them. Um yeah, I also saw, did y'all see that video of, it had never been seen before, of like a male orca and his mother killing another orca female's baby in order to get her to breed? I mean, there are animals and animals do that, but I had never seen that before. It was quite interesting. Um, what color is Reese's dog? I think he's, a- he's a brindle. Oh, he's a brindle. Yeah, he's yeah. brindle. I guess with females. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just saw your website. Are you going to update pictures on Velocity, Bondi, and Midnight? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I will. I'm, it hasn't really been necessary because I have the channel so everyone can see my dogs. So I've been a little lazy about updating the website. My bad. Uh, yes, my next tattoo will be an orca. So, Rachel, how many tattoos do you have? You actually have orcas. I have orcas on my arm. Um, She's got two of them. Yeah. They don't really like, you know. Two orcas. Yeah, I love orcas like like you wouldn't believe. Um, love, love, love them. I would love nothing more than to live where orcas swim by. And I'm one of those crazy people that would try to jump in the water because I know they wouldn't attack me. Like it would be like a 
it's it's like lower like they don't attack people in the wild they just don't do it so why not you know why not um, Rachel, I know this is random, but what is your favorite type of meat? My favorite type of meat? Beef. That's what's for dinner. Well, we already ate. We did, yeah, we ate beef for dinner. <laughs> Man, I want to swim with um, one in the wild. Yes, yeah, seriously. I would be terrifying. Make no mistake. They're huge, but they're gorgeous. And you cannot deny, if you look through history, orcas and people have had a very close relationship. I, I'm going to... I'm going to say it. I think, I don't know what it is, but I think that there's something very unique about the fact that they don't hurt people in the wild. Mm -hmm. I don't understand why it is that a predator would choose not to eat us. You know, they eat a lot of stuff and they don't eat us. And, and they don't even like, it's even so bad as like, if you look at video of them collecting orca calves, like most animals, even if they're nice, even if we're not on, like some people, who will say, well, orcas are really choosy, picky eaters, and they only eat what their mothers teach them to eat. It's very so cultural. And that may all be very well and true, but all animals protect their babies. And orcas will let you take their young. They will let you take them. And I don't know, man. I just I just don't understand it at this point. I just don't understand it. And I... Uh, think that there's something to it. There's been many cultures that have considered orcas to be akin to us, brothers to us. I think it's unique that they're called the wolves of the sea, and we, the Native Americans, called wolves our brothers. Um, there have been people um, that have hunted with orcas. If you look at it, if you Google whale hunting with orcas or orcas helping humans whale hunt, you will find stories of people that said that they worked with orcas, that they, um, the orcas would even come in where their house was and jump to notify the people that there were whales out. So I just, um, I wonder how, how close we would be if the, if, if it was, if we were allowed to, I, I get the fact that people can't be trusted. You know, there's like dumb people that will like beat animals whenever they come in, like, you know, guys that when the, the, the orcas will come in or whatever, like I've even seen it with dolphins, they try to like stick crap in their blowholes. I, what, what, I don't know what's wrong with certain people, but I do think that if we were a more respectable, uh, if we were more respectable with them, I would love to see what kind of bond you could create with a wild intelligent species like that. Um, I don't even think we've scratched the surface of it. And I think that most of the animal rights activists would never even let you. They don't want you touching them. They don't want you swimming with them. And I think that, I think that's kind of, I, I get it, but I also feel like it's limiting. I feel like we should be able to interact safely with animals of, uh, that we share the world with. See, I told you she's sweet. Meow. Bobby, meow, don't you get meow, meow. Meow, meow. Probably this new import male, if if uh, with his health testing. What would you do if you ever got a non-breeding standard colored puppy in a litter? I would just sell it and you know not breed it. So it, I mean, it, they happen, but. Um, recessive um, genes can happen and stuff. We don't know what's been put in, but you know, I would just, um, you know, sell it as a pet, and that's it. See, she's sweet. I told you guys, she is sweet. They just don't like being held. Savannah so cats are weird. They don't like being, they don't like being held. They, body is so like thin. <laughs> she's a very like. This is a healthy cat. She overeats. <laughs> she's not fat. You no, know? she's not fat at all. She eats like a lot of food, like, like a whole bowl of food in there for her. It is so food. Oh, she's shedding. Yeah. I guess she did just come in from the outside, or not just. Um, how do you feel about boar hunting with dogs? Mm. I think that if you live where there's a real hog problem, you know that ultimately dogs um, and hunters are a very effective way of handling the problem. But there's no denying how dangerous it is for the dogs involved. So I think that if you are going to do it, that you should at least use dogs that have been bred 
for it for as long as possible. There are plenty of people that have been breeding uh, what we call hog dogs here in Texas. Um, in East Texas, they've got the East Texas hog dog. So um, she back? She's, she's on my chair. So, um, so anyway, so I, I wouldn't just get a dog that theoretically has a history of a hunting dog and then just take it out and use it for that because you're probably going to lose your dog, you know, to be honest with you. Even even well trained dogs die from hogs. It's just the way it is. Even with like the um, the um, jackets and every all the armor that they that they put on them, all the the Kevlar, they still can get killed by hogs very easily. Which ended at 10. East Texas, um, what do they look like? They're usually pit bull mixes. Big, big pit bull mixes. Um, usually red nosed dogs. You neuter your puppy girl if you ain't gonna break, break, break her. Yeah, I would neuter any dog that I'm not going to breed if it was a female, or well, I would spay her, I should say. That's the correct uh, terminology for that. Uh, will a pit slash husky mix be okay around an eight-year-old cat? No way to know. Probably not. I mean, husky? okay, I'm not going to say probably not. I'm going to say that the temperaments of those two dogs are going to have a very high temperament, very high prey drive. So, you know, theoretically... Your individual dog's temperament may be totally different than that, but speaking in general terms, that is the kind of dog that you would probably have to work with to minimize any possible issues. What would you do? Or what was your reaction when your channel first blew up? Surprise, I think. Um, uh, confused, maybe. Yeah. I never really thought that people would find as much enjoyment out of it as they do. Although actually when I thought about it, there was a guy that had um, dogs over in Turkey and he had a couple videos explaining dominance between his dogs. And I remember being enthralled by it and he only did a couple videos and then, and then he quit. And I remembered like wishing that he would do more of them. So I think I understand now but at the time, it, when it happened, um, I didn't quite understand it. Hold on, you guys. What happened? Nothing. I'm just going on to the other. Okay. Okay. Um. Mm -hmm. Get down. You better go lay down. You better go lay down. What time is it? It is um, 9.35. Okay, we're going to end the live stream at 10 o'clock to see you guys know. What's a normal day like for the doggos? Like what you see. We let them out to go to the bathroom. They, We typically... Um, I'll take them out and let them kind of run around. I'll go out with them and let them run around and did you see the cat? She's like attacking the dogs as they walk by. Um, and so, and then we bring them back in and I take my shower and I get ready and they usually rough house and play around. And then I take them back out again. And then sometimes we'll go do stuff. And, you know, we, that we, because we live on three acres, we have the ability to just like let them outside and just come. Out. So it's a lot of fun. Um, and they get a lot of exercise. In enrichment from that. In the so, morning, uh, we only let two dogs out at a time because if we let them all out together, yeah, they decide it's a great idea. Yeah, we have to be careful. If we're not going to be out there with them, we don't let them all out at once because then they just want to take off like a pack and go do stuff, and we don't want to do it then. They believe they're just the best pack in the world. Yeah, I need to put up fencing. That's just the truth of it. Eventually, they try to like, they'd be like, we're better than 
Yeah, we do have coyotes out there. When, like a whole pack yeah, when the, when, when the coyotes get out there and they start doing their yipping, I take all my pack out there and we do our yipping. And they shut up and they leave us alone. Because we run this. <laughs> right, Kashmir? Are you dogs microchipped? The person's been asking this since the beginning. Ha, 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 ha. Yes, they're all microchipped. Mm. Ha, ha. Do you plan on moving when all the dogs are full grown? I heard y'all talking about moving. Tennessee is the <laughs> place to be. Uh, we want to move to Tennessee. There's, We can get a lot more land out there, and it's beautiful. Uh, it's, it's just gorgeous. And I love Texas so much. It's very hard to leave because Texas is a really addictive place. It's There's really nothing else like it, if I'll be honest with you. Um... But Tennessee is a very beautiful place, and I feel like they have a lot of like um, of old school morals and ideas that I think are being lost um, in a lot of places that I would rather be around. Um, not to mention just the natural beauty. It's hard to even have a bad day when you come out and you're surrounded by such a gorgeous forest. Really if y'all don't leave my cat alone now. Now you would love Colorado. You've been to Colorado. I've been to Colorado. Yeah, I've been to Colorado. It's beautiful, but um, there's something different about Tennessee. Any ball throwing on your acres? No, I don't. I don't usually like to. Um, velocity and stuff. Yeah, if you if with my pack, you don't ever want to do anything to increase the competition level of the dogs and their competitiveness and stuff. Like it just, um, I have a couple dogs like Velocity that will take it too far. And so I just don't like to um, to do that, to hype them up like that. What part of Tennessee? Pigeon Forge, around that area. Uh, we already answered that question, Sam, do you uh, um, How do you curve Frederick? You can't. I mean, you can work with it, but you can't curve it. It's a. It's in their personality. It would be like trying to say, "Could I curve my bluntness?" It's like I can work with it, but I'm always gonna have it. It's it's a, it's ingrained in who I am. And prey drive is like that. I believe that Bonnie <laughs> Stud is, but um, Lucia, have um, thirty to twenty dollars. Thank you. Is Bonnie Stud fixed? Stud. Stud. Uh, from. Same yes, he, he is. Line. She said, if he is, I'm feeling special because my team is back two generations. Um, in to say Manifica? Yeah, yeah. Champions from the kennel. He yes. Special, if that's who you're talking yes, about. that is exactly who we're talking about. Yes, he's off of some of the best dogs they've ever had to offer there. So that's what I mean. Like, it's a very, very, very special pedigree that these dogs and everyone, you know, if you've got a dog off that litter, make sure to do a special thank you to Reese over at Valencia. And see if for even allowing us that opportunity. Yeah, two more times. I one of them already see the dog, please. Yeah, Tennessee the dog. Let's just not go there. It's it's dead. Um, Monica, not not actually dead. She's not dead. Yeah, she's not dead. The, the topic is dead. We don't want to talk about it. Anymore. Monica Mitch Helton donated two dollars. Thank you, Monica. She asked, um, "How do you feel about PetSmart obedience training?" I hate PetSmart obedience training. I hate it. What? No, it's not my leg. That's Blondie. That's Blondie. Oh, like the uh, um, they actually recently I heard them telling someone that the alpha theory has been disproven. That's a falsehood. That's a lie. That's a blatant lie. If they're going to be teaching that kind of crap, then I cannot support them. Literally. Cannot. And the one, the one of the things that annoys me the most is whenever I go in there with my choke chain on and they, and they try to they try to talk to me about training. <laughs> I almost want to do that. Just, <laughs> and just like walk away <laughs> because, because it's just like, like, you know, no, no, we're not going to go there. <laughs> but no, I would never get my dog there trained there. Uh, uh, They'll kick your dog out in a heartbeat. Um, I've heard about that too. They don't even train certain breeds, which I also think is funny because 
basically they try to stay away from like stubborn breeds, dogs that, that can't just be bribed with treats. So I personally would never go to them ever, ever. Mm-hmm. It's uh, 941. Reminder, we are ending at 10. Yeah, get, uh, your, get your questions in now because we're ending at 10. Rachel, I love that you don't promise your skin. Rachel, Savannah. Wait, what is it? Rachel, I love that you don't compromise. Compromise, probably. Compromise. Um, uh, what do you do, if anything, in particular for the dental health of your dogs? Nothing. Um, I haven't needed to. Uh, if I needed to, I would, but I just haven't needed to. I think a lot of my dogs, because I feed them raw, they, I, all I can say is I've only noticed plaque on dogs that eat dog food. Anytime I fed my dog's dog food, they've gotten plaque. If you ever feed your dog, look, um, like if you feed kibble, feed them, and then a couple hours later, lift up their lips and take a look, and you'll see all that dog food up in their, up in their gums, all up in their stuff. It's not good. It's the like, raw does not do that. I could guess that they could get infected from that. Yeah, yeah. the raw does not do that. So um, my dogs had perfectly pearly whites until I started moving them over to kibble. Like, for example, like cashmere and preacher. And they didn't start getting any kind of tart or any kind of staining until I started feeding them kibble. So. Yeah, they said raw with bones actually does a very good job at cleaning. Yeah. Yep. Rachel, how much? So good. How much do you ask for your puppies? No, so my puppies depends on the litter, depends on what's going on. But typically, my puppies start off at um, for a non-champion dog, like out of a litter, like um, you know, velocities. None of them are champion. We'll probably start at you know anywhere between two thousand and twenty-five hundred, and they go up to thirty-five hundred. So that we may get higher prices for when, uh, when we have like, you know, very, very high quality litters, like where all the dogs, you know, both parents are championed, um, really good health scores, you know, things like that. But as of now, that's where we're at. I don't think that we'll ever go over like 4,500 for a dog, no matter what the dog is. I don't think we'll ever go over 4,500. So, um, can I help you what on test this? do you have to do any dog to see if they are breeding quality? You're going to want to do the hips. Um, I recommend the pen hip testing. You, um, you can do OFA testing on the hips, on the elbows, on the heart, um, the eyes. There's lots of stuff you can do. I only um, recommend doing the testing that is um, relevant to your breed. And... And even more so, I think it's even a good idea to start doing genetic testing just to make, just to kind of know what, what your dogs have and what they carry um, to try to minimize or at least be aware of potential hazards in that regard as well. Connor Shelton says, Rachel, you have sent me that spaghetti recipe. Just a reminder in case you forgot. I know. I'm sorry. I will. I did see that. I will send it. I promise. Is it worth it to have a dog CGC certified? That's... CGC, what is that? The I forget what that is. I want to say that's like the it's like good like canine good citizen award. I think is what it is. Um, I mean, if you want to, I think you can. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I think the more stuff you do with your dog, the better. I'll never frown on anybody doing something productive with their dog. Would you feed your dog alcohol? I'm pretty sure the seeds are poisonous. I want to say, yeah, I want to say that seeds of apples might be poisonous, but I could be wrong on that. Personally, I don't feed my dogs any fruits or anything because, you know, as far as I know, they wouldn't have access to them in nature. I will say that I did recently see video of a coyote up in a tree eating apples. So that was, um, that was interesting. Um, MLG Genius uh, asked, what do you think about Caesar Milan techniques? We already answered that question. Yeah, Caesar Milan... Um, I, I really appreciate, uh, I think that he kind of made the way for people like me and people that, that do, um, follow natural training like we do. Um, you know, Caesar Milan would tell you himself that all he does is watch the animals 
and he uses their own behaviors and um, communication for each other the same way that Monty Roberts, the horse whisperer, does the same thing. He watches the horses and learns how to communicate using their own communication. So it's kind of like how I was with my cat. Like if, if you watch an animal long enough and you see how they communicate with each other, you can mimic that. I'm sure that that used to be a skill for like Native Americans or hunters. You had to be able to mimic animals. I think it's kind of a lost art in a way. But I, I think that um, I think that I wish that more people would pay attention to that and be willing to learn like that because you can like with my cat, for example, you have to be able to communicate on like cat in order to get her to appreciate you and be around you. Like there are certain calls that I make to make her feel comfortable and eye movements like that one guy that talks about it, do the slow blink. Um, it's a really, I mean, you can literally get a cat to come to you with the slow blink. Like you can actually communicate you won't know exactly what they're saying, but you can get in a cat to interact with you in a way that they wouldn't have, wouldn't have wanted to previously if you do certain things. And that involves knowing how they communicate and communicating with them on that level. Um, and I like doing that. I want to interact with my animals on a very personal level. So I don't mind mimicking those kinds of things, which some people may think is childish. I don't really care. I love my animals and I want to be close to them. And so if there's something that I can do to have a closer relationship with them, then I will. And so that often involves paying very close attention and mimicking those same behaviors, those contact calls, um, things like that, that make them feel comfortable communicating with you. Uh, Alicia, before we answer this question, so, 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 so many times. And thoughts on documentary TV? Documentary TV? Yeah, documentary. Um, I did notice that um, he deleted. So on his last video, the, the picking your puppy video, somebody commented about me on that channel. And the like, the comment had over 200 likes on it when I checked last. And then when I went back and checked, it had been deleted. So I don't think that uh, documentary TV likes us very much either. Having said that, um, I don't like how he highlights backyard breeders. He highlights some pretty crappy people. I don't have a problem with the concept of his channel. I have a problem with the people that he highlights and gives um, praise to because they're not always the best people and a lot of them even are known for being like straight scandalous. Now, I'm not going to say a lot of them, but there are some that I know of that are involved in scandal. Um, and I don't understand why he chose those people when there's so many other people that don't have things like that going on. What is your favorite non-believer dog? Corso. Yeah. yeah. Um, have you ever been bit by a dog? Yep. Oh. Yep, a couple times. You got scarred. Yeah, I got my lips split by a dog named Pirate that was my mother's. It was like a lopsa opsa whenever I was a kid. And then um, I got bit um, trying to break up a dog fight twice, two, two separate times. Um, I think that's it. I think I've been, I've been bitten by an ankle by a chihuahua for sure. They will. They'll bite your ankles. I've yeah. had it happen to me. I was uh, hanging out with a friend one time, and we were having a pillow fight, and their dog came after me. A little chihuahua literally came up and tried to... I think... Yeah, he did. He bit my arm. Yeah. I'm so upset. I think I hit the dog. <laughs> it was like a dick. <laughs> yeah. It's like small. Yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite small dog breed? Um, like or maybe yeah, I like, I like wiener dogs. Um... And I do like Frenchies. I'm not gonna lie, they're cute. Um, maybe don't talk about Frenchie. But maybe bull terriers, but they're not really small. I think that's it for small dogs. I've always wanted to a patter a Patterdale. I feel like that would probably be a cool breed. And then the Staffordshire bull terrier, the real one, like the one from the UK. Um, those I've, I've always found to be very, very pretty dogs. Advice on helping a dog that is very anxious? 
Don't pet them when they're anxious. Ignore them. Make them go lay down. Teach them to be calm. Um, if they're pacing, make them go lay down in their spot until they go to sleep. Just keep telling if they keep getting up, keep making them go lay down. You know, just force them to be calm. You know, even if like it's like it's like you can be as anxious as you want to be, but you're gonna sit right here and be anxious while you're doing it. You know, like you're not gonna walk around the house. Like never let them do anything that works themselves up. You know what I mean? Pacing, looking in windows, things like that is gonna work them up. So don't let them do that. You know, make them lay down. And if they want to sit there and be like this the whole time, fine. But at least you're sitting still. Low so. down, this would never happen. Are you afraid your dog will, turn, or your pack will turn on you? Never. My pack would never turn on me. Not ever. They'd be scared. Yeah, not ever. They would never turn on me. No, it would never happen. Um, that's not, yeah, that's just not. There is no fear in mother. Yeah. In no. That. Like, no. It would be like, you ever seen that Hulk where he, like, gets mad and he's like, He's like, I'll take you all. Like, that's how I am. You know what I mean? Like, nobody nobody it's wants like a piece grabbing of... grabbing things from the corners of the room. And nobody <laughs> wants a piece of mama bear. Nobody wants a piece. Yes, they need to be socialized. If you... I'll say this. If you don't go anywhere and you don't do anything and you don't take the dog anywhere, then fine, don't socialize it. But if you're ever going to take it out in public, socialize the dog. This sound really sucks. We keep a really loud sound. We just assume the audio. We all hear. Yeah, we hear. Some of these audio mixed up, some of them will some noise, which is some noise. Is it the repeat in your ears again? Nothing different. It's screeching. It's not really scary. Here's the here's the sound. Stay here. No, it's here. It's super high pitch noise called breakup. A cricket. Ew. Plus the sound. High pitch. No ringing on my ears. High pitch. No deer tapping it. A pit bull in the tree. Like a dog whistle in your ear. You can't have this noise. You can't hear the creaking in your ears. You can't hear a dog howling. No cricket like microphone feedback. Saying that noise never stops. Is it your we can't even hear. We don't have any audio on. Oh, you hear it? 